Temperatures in the 70s couldn't ask for a better day for some high stakes. Sunbelt Conference football. The Texas State Bobcats are in the middle of their best season in nearly a decade. Their next win could lead to the program's first ever bowl appearance. Meanwhile, at 6-2, the Georgia Southern Eagles control their own destiny to reach next month's championship game. Alongside Keith Moreland, I'm Brand Freeman, coming to you from Bobcat Stadium. And Keith, here we are in November. The stakes are getting higher. Everything now magnified. Yeah, everything magnetized. For Texas State, they've got to find a way to get another win to get bowl eligible. On the other side of the ledger, the Eagles got to win to have an opportunity to play in the championship game. Both teams can line up the scoreboard. They really can as you look at where they rank in the Sunbelt Conference and scoring total offense. Bobcats a bit more balanced than Georgia Southern, but the Eagles, the Eagles can't sling it. On that note, Keith, what do you have for today's keys to the game? Well, I think when you first look at this game, you would think, well, a high scoring game. Well, got to be balanced. Got to run the ball offensively for the Eagles a little bit. And they got to wreak havoc on the defensive side. On the other side, win first down and protect the football for the Bobcats. All right, let's now check in with Cool Riggs down to the sidelines. Brand, really, the name of the game today is turnovers, and that's been a key for this Eagles defense all season. In fact, in Georgia Southern six wins so far, they have had at least three turnovers, have forced at least three turnovers in each. And head coach Clay Helton said they have to just stay consistent. You know, if it's not broke, you don't have to fix it. On the other side of things, though, the Bobcats, they're actually coming off a loss where they actually committed four turnovers. Now, DJ Kenny said to keep it simple today, and keeping it simple means taking care of the football. Grant? All right, thanks, Coral. Again, a lot on the line today. The Eagles looking to remain in the driver's seat in the Sunbelt Conference East Division. For the Bobcats, again, trying to become bowl eligible for the first time in nine years. Texas State has won the toss. We'll see G.J. Kenny's offense on the field first. Yeah, going to be going into a pretty stiff breeze, Brand, as we start the ball game. Open to kickoff from Michael Lance, and off we go. A touchback starts the game as we look at Bobcat quarterback T.J. Finley, and again, Keith, last week just too many mistakes, two critical interceptions. Now, the two interceptions, at only five on the year, but two last week. The other thing, I don't think his decision-making last week was as quick as he was as precise. He's got to come out, make decisions quickly, get the ball out of his hands. Finley did start last week really well. In fact, he engineered a game-opening 84-yard touchdown drive in the loss against Troy. Man in the offense here for his ninth start of the season. And Texas State's first play is a run for Ishmael Motti. And Motti breaking a tackle, breaking free off the right side. Good start for the Bobcats. A gain of 12 yards starts their day. Boy, he has just been outstanding all year. If you do not wrap him up, he will not give up. And they're right back to the line of scrimmage. Here they go. Facing an Eagle defense, which during this two-game winning streak has been really good, creating havoc. They forced seven turnovers, sacking the opposing quarterback seven times. And wins over ULM and last week over rival Georgia State. Motti again, the call there, good for about four yards. Oh. Player down, and that's the right guard, Brent Walker. He can't get himself to his feet. That's a big loss. Yeah, that is Bray Walker, and in every sense of the term, Keith, a big loss. 6'7, 350 pounds. First year transfer from Oklahoma. Five-star recruit coming out of high school has been a big part of this offensive line that was overhauled over the offseason. It's a Bobcat offensive line, which has already been without their captain, Nash Jones, since week two of the season. Yeah, and they've had to do so much shuffling, and Walker's really slid into that right guard spot, and he's been an integral part. You hope that's not something long-term. He is able to get up and put a little weight on it as he comes off the field here, but... Something we will watch is this ball game just getting underway. And something G.J. Kenny said in terms of what this game comes down to, he thinks it's his offensive line against that front from Georgia Southern, and a big part of that just hobbled off of the sidelines. So after the gain of four from Motti, it is second down and six. Third play of the drive coming up for T.J. Finley, who's Thrown a lot of passes underneath in recent weeks. Past two games, averaging less than six yards per pass attempt. If you're G.J. Kenny and offensive coordinator Mac Leftwich, might want to think about going vertical here. Finley gets out of a sack somehow. On the run, Finley forced out. 
by Marquez Watson Trent. Sideline looking for a flag. It's not coming. Instead, it's going to bring up third down and seven. Yeah, Watson Trent is a tremendous player. I mean, he makes, uh, he's got 79 tackles now, 80 after this one right here. Uh, he's just an out, he's a tackling machine. He, he leads their team, doubled anybody else on their team in tackles. Yeah, Huge 70, third down here. 79 for Watson Trent. Nobody else has more than 35 on that's, this Eagles defense. That's incredible. A player that leads by example in production when talking to head coach Clay Helton. Man third coverage. down and seven. Finley over the middle has got a man open, and that's Cole Wilson spinning out of a tackle. Has a block downfield. Turns on the Jets and takes it inside the 25-yard line. They caught the Eagles in a man coverage. I said it right before the snap. You see the motion. You see the man. It's just really tough to cover Wilson on a quick inside slant there for the first down. Gain of 37 yards. That's big for the Bobcats because they had zero plays of over 30 yards last week Explosives. against Troy. First down and 10. Finley. Takes a shot over the middle and a walk in touchdown starts the game for Joey Holbert. The Georgia Southerns come out and said, We're going to play you, man. Well, these receivers are doing a great job and they're coming after. The offensive line holds up. GJ Kinney talked about that this week where he mm -hmm. said, Hey, we got to hold up on the offensive front. They do take it right down the field. Put it in the end zone. Didn't take long, less than three minutes. Seventh touchdown catch of the year for Hobart. That leads the team. And for the Bobcats, a five play, 75 yard drive starts it. Talked about the fireworks we could see today. The Bobcats get the scoring started first, and the Eagles are looking to respond. 12.45 to go in the opening quarter. Bobcats early lead over the visitors out of Statesboro, Georgia. This Bobcat team has made a habit of bouncing back. You look at their first three losses of the year, coming back from each of those games with a win. We're going to see what today unfolds. But so far, Keith, a good start. G.J. Kenny's team on the opening drive, 75 yards, and Finley looks sharp. They did. Converted the one-third down they had with a big play, and it came out. The Eagles came out and decided we're going to try to man them up in the first series. And I tell you what. Bobcats took advantage of that with some good inside slant moves. And when you bring pressure mm -hmm. with man, if you don't get to the quarterback, it's going to be difficult to hold up. A G.J. Kenny coach team, whether at Encounter Ward or here at Texas State, has never lost back-to-back -back games. That's to, an incredible stat. And trying to keep that trend going today is DeAndre Buchanan awaits deep for Georgia Southern. And he goes offense, which like the Bobcats, can light it up. And they're looking to respond after this kick from Matthew Velasco. Scoring is not something that, they, that it bothers them. They, they, the Eagles are going to put it, going to put balls in the end zone. The Eagles team coming off its first win over rival Georgia State since 2019. And here is the return from Buchanan. Got across the 20s, got some blockers on the outside. Buchanan going left down the sidelines. There he goes inside the 30, inside the 20, and stops just short of the 15-yard line. No flags on the play. Well, just a great kick return. They got a they had a left return on the kick went to the right. Outside contain, lost contain right here, and just allowed him down the field. It's a nice job giving ground. And it, it, yes, you gave up a bit of return, but you didn't let it into the end zone. But what great starting field position for Georgia Southern. Great return. Davis Brin, the quarterback for the Eagles, wearing the number zero today for Georgia Southern. More on that coming up throughout the broadcast. Among the nation leaders in passing yards, has had it. A tendency of turning it over there, though you see the 12 interceptions against 17 touchdowns. Jalen White, the first play from scrimmage for the Eagles, a good run. Driving the legs forward to the 11-yard line for about seven. will bring up second and three. Well, that's something they want to establish. They want to be a, a little more equal 
you know, they can sling it with anybody. So, but they've got to get a little running game going and a good start there. And why does that a huge workload during this two game winning streak? Over 50 carries between the last two games against ULM and Georgia State going over 100 each time. Here's Brent on the run, slides to the 10, but his slide began at the 11. That's where it's marked down, and now the Eagles facing third down for the first time. Yeah, these corners are going to, under a lot of pressure today for the Bobcats, you, you've got to get it done on the outside, try to take away these two big receivers. They did a nice job there. Some changes as four right receivers into the game for Georgia Southern. Eagles, a very good third down team, second best in the conference. Motion from the big threat, Caleb Hood. Bryn looking, well protected. Bryn backpedaling, throwing, and throwing it away. Well, that's just great coverage. That's a, that's a coverage for Bryn had nowhere to go. They were trying to do a move on the outside where they faked the bubble screen, hit the blocker that's going downfield. It's not there, it's taken away. Does a nice job buying time, buying time, but nowhere to go with the football leads to a field goal attempt. Brings out Michael Lance, senior kicker, having a really good season, 15 of 19 on the year. And he will try from 28 yards out to put the Eagles on the board. So a three and a half for the offense, but this after the huge kick return from Buchanan, and the Eagles settle for three. 7 3, Texas State on top. And again, Keith, you talk about your mistakes in this game. Georgia Southern. Now, James Madison does lead the East Division, but the Eagles are the ones who are actually in first because the Dukes are not postseason eligible. At this point, That's next year right. will be their first year. So if the Eagles went out, you're talking about your, your East Division representative right here. No question. It, and, you know, that's a lot on the line. It, it, and let's just look at the beginning. Great kick return. It, for Texas State, they do a great job. Sudden change defense is another point that coaches talk about all the time. What do you do when you have a sudden change? Well, when you get an 82-yard kickoff return, mm -hmm. you get a three and out, leads to a field goal tip. That's a nice job there. Offensively, for the Eagles on the other side of that, they're going to go back over and really look at that. Because, Brent, when you look at it, they gained seven yards on the first down mm -hmm. run and went 0 for 2, trying to get any more yards than that. Again, the win for the Eagles last week over Georgia stuff, uh, Georgia State, beg your pardon. And when you talk to Clay Hale, and he tells you this team is so much further along this year than it was last year. Sitting at 6-2, and two, winners of two in a row, only setbacks on the road at JMU and at Wisconsin. And the Bobcats will come out at offense, leading 7-3, starting for their own 25. And again, we saw the big play offense from G.J. Kenny on that opening drive that we didn't see last week is there is a Bobcat down. This is Bobby Crosby down to the field for Texas State. Crosby getting hurt in special teams. On defense, he's a backup safety and the safety position is already kind of thin. Yes, it is. For Texas State, Torrey Spears out for the year. Crosby's kind of taken more and more snaps because of that injury to Spears. So. If he's unable to go, that's secondary taking another blow for G.J. Kenny. Well, it, it is. Now, Holton and Cup have been outstanding. That's not to say that. They're, between them, they've got 100 tackles. So they've been good at that safety position. But, you know, it's it's one of those things, too, when he, you think back, well, how did I get hurt on a ball that went out of the back of the end zone? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that is a non-contact uh, type scenario. Good sign there, Crosby being helped up. And he's going to check out to the sidelines, presumably to the medical tent here in a moment. All right, in the first drive, two, a big third down conversion, inside slant. We saw the Georgia Southern come out and play a lot of man. See what they do here in this second possession, because there are times when coordinators look at it and say, I don't like what we did there. Let's come out with something different. And they're showing a two deep shell. Right now in, in a zone coverage. Second drive of the game for Texas State. Went 75 yards and five plays on their opening drive. This is Holbert on that receiver's sweep to his left. Holbert breaking free across the 40-yard line. And 
Big dose of Joey Hobart early on for Texas State. No, good seal block, great deception in the backfield. Gets a good seal on the outside, and they're right back to the line of scrimmage, and here they go. Hobart was kind of held in check last week against Troy. He's been let loose so far today. Is Ismail Mahdi pounds a rock for about five yards. Good first down play. And you said this earlier, Keith, first, first down is a down. Texas State He's has to win. win. If they win first down, they can get into this. NASCAR hurry up mode and defensively you can't make adjustments. Second and four, Motti again, Motti. Taken down eventually by TJ Smith at the 35 yard line and another drive for the Bobcats moving like clockwork. And then they come right back, no substitutions, the defense can't substitute. Finley right back to the line to run it again. Right now they've been able to run it or throw it. Body coming off a big game against Troy, went over 100 yards for the third time this year. Coming into the game, he's a buck 46 away from becoming the first 1,000-yard back for this program since 2014. That ball spun over the middle by Finley. It's incomplete. Looking for Cole Wilson, Shamar Bartholomew on coverage for the Eagles. A little RPO that time, and Finley, that was one he, that he pulled it out, and when he pulled it out, the coverage was so good. You can see it, the rhythm and the timing was off just because of the great coverage in the secondary. Second and 10 inside of 10 minutes to go. Eagles riding a two-game winning streak. Bobcast trying to avoid a two-game slide. Motti spinning away the 30 and tracked down by Tyrell Davis. Good second down play. We'll bring up third and short. I tell you what, it, it, he is just really difficult one-on-one -on -one to bring down. Had him in a shot in it, broke that tackle. Now third down. Bobcats again working quick. Here's Motti breaking through the line and will move the sticks again. So far, Keith, the play calling a third down has been sharp for Texas State. Uh, just good trap block right here. You pull the tight end from the far side, comes across the formation, does Fox, and makes a great block right at the point of attack in the first down. Bobcats now nearing the red zone where they've had some issues in recent weeks. Last 13 trips inside the 20, they've come away with touchdowns only four times. Why not give it to Mahdi again? They got a heavy workload here, stacked up this time by that Eagle defense, MJ Stroud, and Kadri Jackson on the tackle. Now a substitution as Davenport in at tailback. It allows the defensive front to substitute. You know, those three big guys coming out of the game right there, you know, big guys get tired on these long mm -hmm. possessions. So good change for the Eagles to get a, a new front in the lineup. Look there, Davion Rhodes. Sophomore for the Eagles on their defensive line. Second and eight. Man coverage. Finley so far, three of four passing. Throws out one over the middle, and there's a flag. Was looking for Ashton Hawkins, and they're going to get Demel Hickman on the hold for Georgia Southern. Brent, it is so, as an ex-defensive back, your inside releases are so important. Hawkins gets inside him. And then once you once you give up that leverage of inside as a defensive back, you have to try to come in front. He knew he couldn't cut in front and knock it off, so he just reached up and got a piece of him as the ball was in the air. Bobcats piecing together another drive. They had a, several long drives over the past few weeks. A play of this drive coming up first and goal inside the 10. And here's a quick pass to Cole Wilson, breaking free inside the five-yard line, then taken down by Mark Stampley. That'll set up second down and goal. Bartholomew, just an outstanding job, 17 on the outside. He's the guy that makes the play. He reads it. He doesn't get credit for the tackle, but he slows everything down and lets the help come from the inside. He's seen making some substitutions here. Cheater in the tailback position. First time he's checked in, good short yardage back. Has four rushing touchdowns on the year, and three of those are in goal to go situations. So this is where they like using him the most. They're going to flip it instead. This is Holbert back into the outside, and he's going to be slung down. How about the job in space by Tyrell Davis? Well, Davis does a great job. He, he sees it, reads it. Free safety, he says, no, 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 no. You're not going to get the corner on me. So he just takes it from the outside, and they don't get around the edge. 
Now it's going to be a huge third down, and you're back out to the seven-yard line. Remember, Finley on third and goal last week threw a pick in the end zone. If you're Finley here, ball security paramount. It's a big message from his head coach, G.J. Kenny, throughout the week. If the play's not there, throw it away, settle for three. Eagles look like a blitz coming. They're going to bring it. Finley loses the football. That ball is live, and the Eagles recover. Jumping on the football for Georgia Southern is Isaac Walker. It looked like it was never secured by Finley, and it was a quarterback draw. Ball gets knocked out of his hands, goes backwards. How big a defensive stop for that. He, Remember that circle that drive. It's a chance to go up 14 nothing with the first and goal at the eight. Boy, it feels like deja vu, Keith, from last week. It was the second possession of the game last week for the Bobcats, a turnover and third and goal, and it happens for his second straight week. And the Eagles getting on another turnover, the 20th day of force this year, top 10 nationally, and turnovers forced. Now Bren going to work, going to hand it off at a big gaping hole for Jim and White off that left side. Good for about 10 yards and a good start of the drive for Georgia Southern. That came back to the short side, lined up three receivers to the left, come back to the short side of the field, good blocking out in front. Enough for the first down. And Jim and White now closing in on 2,000 career yards, rushing after the gain of 10. Bren. Zips one over the middle. Bobcats say it hit the turf for Duran Burgess. And that is an incomplete pass, second and ten. Uh, just down in front. Didn't want to lead the guy. Anytime that inside slant, you've got a free safety. You don't want to lead it up and out where he can get. You want to throw it down and in, sort of, and let him go down and get it. Just couldn't secure it. Well, Burgess has really thrived in this offense under Clay Helton dating back to last year. Over 100 catches in this system. Brent looking and he locates Caleb Hood. Good open field tackle made by Brian Holloway. Going to bring up third down. Now, Holloway, heart and soul of this defense, no question for the Bobcats. Always around. He gets that big paw and zero gets you. Most of the time you go to the ground and he gets it done right there. Bobcast defensively have had some issues throughout the year getting off the field in third down. Looking for a third down stop here after the offense turned it over. Motion from Caleb Hood. Brent steps up, stands, fires, and a first down inside of midfield. A bullet to Anthony Queeley to move the chains. What a catch. I mean, this is balls behind him to the inside, sets down in the soft spot of the zone, and this is a rocket right at him. How about that going up mm. with those hands and bringing it down? First through transfer out of Syracuse. Queeley has been quiet as of late. First catch in three games, but a big one with five minutes to go in the first. Eagles on the move, fit play the drive. Off the play action. Brent lofting that one deep to the sidelines, incomplete. Going for Burgess, Chris Mills on coverage, but there was a flag when the pass was thrown. Right, this is going to be rough in the passers. Ball was incomplete, but you see it just. Pass, pass. Pass, pass. Pass, pass. Pass, uh, Trentis Livingston, our head official, his mic was breaking up there. I believe the call was against Jordan Rebels. Uh, it, it, he's got a free shot. You just got to pull off just at the end. Uh, it, and he just took two extra steps to get there. And that's going to get called pretty much every time. Penleys were huge for this defense last week. Bobcats were penalized four times, three of those against the defense, all three for 15-yard penalties. Drive extenders. White up the middle. Honest gain of about three. With the Eagles on the move. A drive that began after the Bobcats coughed up the ball on goal to go inside the 10. Now hurry up. Empty back. The Eagles. Davis Brin, first year transfer from Tulsa. 
Operating in the offense, and the ball is stripped, and Brynn able to jump back on it. Saw the pressure coming from Ben Bell. Ben Bell just outstanding. Gets off the ball quickly, gets that hand up. Watch him get it before it gets out of his hand. Leaks out with the left hand, knocks it away. Brings up a huge third down. Bell coming off a big game against Troy, a couple of sacks, three and a half tackles for loss. Could be a tear for opposing quarterbacks. And now forces a third and 15. Showing man free. They're manning up on every receiver with a free safety. Eagles looking for the fourth first down of the drive. White on the draw. Exploding inside the 20. White on the run all the way to the end zone. What a play. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. What a call. Go to the draw and White. Just great blocking up front. Catch the Bobcats in man. Anytime you're in man and you don't go to a pass, you guys are not seeing it. Makes one guy miss right there and then this outs everybody, runs everybody to the corner. Seventh rushing touchdown of the year for White. Clay Helton told us early in the week he is the key to the team's success. They put a lot on his shoulders in recent weeks. No OG Arnold available again today to spell him. And White answers the bell with a 39 yard gallop into the end zone. And the Eagles have their first lead. Jalen White. Over 2,000 rushing yards now in his career. This play has put the Eagles on top, 10-7. Clay Helton told us that takeaways fueled this Georgia Southern team at a huge takeaway with the Bobcats driving inside the 10. Leads to an eventual go-ahead touchdown drive. 73 yards and seven plays. And again, Keith, how about the call itself? Third and 15, the Eagles go draw. Jalen White goes 39 yards. Well, it was just an excellent call. Caught the Bobcats in, in a perfect defense for that draw, but that's a 14-point swing mm -hmm. in a matter of three minutes of football time uh, where it looked like it was going to be a 14-3 Bobcat lead. Instead, you look up the scoreboard, Eagles with the lead. Eagles offensive coordinator Brian Ellis throughout the season has said he's looking for seven plays each game of 20 yards or more. Got one for 39 there moments ago. So the Bobcats looking to respond. Now trailing 10-7. TJ Finley, the Bobcats back at offense when we come back. We talked about it. Davis Brand wearing the number zero today. The ninth player to wear that number this season. It's kind of a badge of honor for Georgia Southern, talking to Clay Helton, what does it mean? Players who show zero softness, zero selfishness, and zero accountability issues, and he hopes in the case of Davis Brin, it also means zero interceptions today. He's thrown 12, but it, one ball game was the one that, that has the most, and that mm -hmm. happened in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. I know Coral excited to talk about Brin later in the broadcast, playing at his Home state of Texas, both uh, Coral and Bren from the same area in Bernie, just outside of St. Marcus. A lot of friends and family here for Davis Bren. As Lee has a stop there for the Eagles, it's going to bring up second down and nine. Uh, nice job up front. And really, no place to go. Wrapped him up, brings him to the ground. He's going to bring it up second and long. Got to win first down if you're the Bobcats. Terry E. Terry and e, uh, Lee Jr. rather on the stop there for the Eagles. First year transfer from Texas A&M. Eagles got off the line there pretty quick and Finley brought down for a sack. Justin Rhodes. Player that's got a ton of penetration this year is seven tackle for loss. And the Bobcats are staring at third and 16. Well he just got off the ball so quickly Finley had to try to step up early and couldn't get it out of his hands now. Scenario you don't want to be in third and long. An offensive line missing some parts right now. Bray Walker left the game earlier for Texas State, their big right guard. And so now the Bobcats having to shuffle the deck a bit up front. Eagles only going to bring three a draw for the Bobcats. Motti breaking a few tackles. 
Monty crossed the 30, a good run, but short of the first down, and Texas State goes three and out. Well, it's all about the, the first down play. It, it, no yardage, put it behind the chains, had to throw it, and then they go for the sack on second down. And this is a wonderful run. Monty just makes a lot of people miss. He's exciting with the football in his hand, but you gain eight or nine, you're still five, six yards short. So the Bobcats punting for the first time. Seamus O'Kelly punted twice last week. Caleb Hood back to return. And O'Kelly got the punt off, but there's a flag. Could be roughing the kicker coming up here against Georgia Southern. I think if it's even if it's running into the kicker, it's going to be a first down because it was mm -hmm. fourth and five. Georgia Southern could be very aggressive on special teams. They have blocked a kick, kick each of the last two weeks. But this time committing a penalty will keep the possession with Texas State. That's a huge break. And it is going to be running into the kicker. We have not heard the announcement. It's only the five-yard variety, but it's going to be enough for the first down. Prentice Livingston talking to G.J. Kenny about it. That's how important the run by Monty was before that, just to get it back to a five yards, and the running into the kicker gives him the first down, and the drive continues. All right, so the Bobcats here, some new life, trailing for the first time. Third drive of the game for Texas State. First ended with a touchdown, the second with a turnover. They moved the ball well. Looking to finish some more drives here. Here's Davenport with a big hole. Davenport, look at that move in the open field. Davenport knights his way for about 14 yards. Now, nice blocking up front. Got a good seal to the outside. A little double team up front and a seal. It's it almost to the 50. Didn't really see much of Davenport last week against Troy. Motti had the lion's share of carries. This time forced back. Tyrell Davis has made a couple of plays for the Eagles. Ball comes out, but Davenport is down. A loss of two in the second of 12. Women on the field, four progress. Before the ball became loose. Second down. You know, we talk about Texas State and their ability to get tackles in the backfield. Well, the sure. Eagles are right behind them in the conference in tackles for loss per game. That's their fourth already the afternoon. Yeah. TFLs will change what you do offensively, no question. It changes the whole dynamic. Yes, it does. You, you get behind the change of first and second down. That makes third down almost impossible to convert. Empty here. Too much time. Delay a game coming up against Texas State. One step forward, two step back for the Bobcats after that huge opportunity after the running into the kicker here. Now it's second, 16. Yeah, between flags and turnovers, self-inflicted wounds, and G.G. Kenny saying that they've got to clean up their mistakes. Really, even just two or three of them can really hurt them in any game. I've seen that today. Second down, 17. Finley slings that for Sean Shaw. Back to the original line of scrimmage, or close to it. That'll end the first quarter. So for Georgia Southern, two big plays outside of offense. A big kick return and a big defensive turnover, helping lead to 10 Eagle points. At the end of one, the Eagles hold a 10-7 lead over the Bobcats in San Marcos. Today is Heroes Day as the Bobcats here honor veterans who have served in the military. One of those honorees, Tyler Huff, got to partake in the ceremonial motorcycle drive through the tunnel. Tyler Huff wrapped up his playing career this past year before he started playing college football. Keith served the Navy for four years. So, Tyler Huff, thank you for your service. Uh, no question. Thanks to all those that have put the uniform on and represented the United States of America. That includes our very own producer, Victoria Hine. Thank you for your service, Thank Victoria. You. As we start the second quarter, Bobcats with the ball to drive, giving some new life after a running into the punter penalty against Georgia Southern. 
Third and 11, big third down here over the middle, trying to make a play in space as Shaw and got cut down. Really good tackle in the open field made by Demel Hickman, and Shaw's going to be short by about two yards. Hickman is down, though. He still hasn't been able to get up. That's going to call timeout. I think this is go-for-it territory. Just got that head. Just, you know, shot in there to, to bring him down. You get that knee at the side of the helmet. So right now looking at Hickman, first year transfer out of East Carolina. As they look at him, we'll step aside early in the second. Bobcats have a decision to make when we come back facing fourth down and two. Look, Keith, the East Division is tough. You got programs like Georgia Southern, like JMU, Coastal Carolina, Appalachia State, and over the years, the Bobcats have struggled against the East only 3-11. and 11. Yeah, it, it, that's the difference in why you're not going to bowl games. You, it, it's, it's a league of two conferences, and you got to compete on both sides of it. Georgia Southern, number one in that side right now because of what James Madison's situation is being the second year in conference play. All right, so G.J. Kenny's decision is, let's go for it. Fourth down and two. Bobcats have been very aggressive on fourth downs this year. One of the more aggressive teams in the Sun Belt. Don't get it here. The Eagles have really good starting field position. And here we go. Fourth and two. Finley lost that complete and a first down. Good strike. Had to throw that ball a long way to connect with Joey Hobart. Well, I tell you what, this is a really difficult throw, and that tells you what Finley brings to the table and his arm strength. You got to have good footwork to get it delivered. He did to the outside. That was a 30-yard throw for three downs, for well, three yards. You take the fumble exchange out of it. Finley's having a good day. Eight of nine passing on the verge of 100 yards already. Here's Hobart in motion. Finley stands, delivers, Hobart wide open, nobody to the same zip code as Hobart. And he's going to take that for a first down across the 30-yard line. Now trying to get something down the field. Nice job by Finley and Davenport as well to come up with a big block right here to help him on right here. That little chip block gave him enough time to step in and deliver the throw from his tailback position. Again, Hobart's been the favorite target for Finley throughout the year. Fifth catch already. For Holbert, scored the Bobcats, slow touchdown on their opening drive. Ted play of this drive coming up. Finley stands, fires, Hawkins near the sidelines, trying to reel that one in, one-handed. A little bit overthrown, going to bring up second down. I'm being picky here, but he was open earlier. you got to get that ball out of your hand. This ball was out of the field to play because Finley didn't get it released quick enough where he mm -hmm. could get it in the field to play. He was open on that double move to the outside. And now it's going to be second and 10. Early in the second. Little rut action here for Davenport picking his way through and then got up into the bit by Bartholomew. Davis finishes off the play. All that action there for Davenport for about four yards. Going to bring up third and six. Now this is a direct snap. It goes straight to him. And he puts it in motion. It's a counter. They're going to fake the jet sweep after the direct snap to Davenport. Able to get something. Huge third down here. He's like offensive coordinator Mac Leftwich has gone a little bit deeper in the playbook so far today. Bobcats in third down, two of five. Finley rolls, throws, Davenport's got the first down, and he's got more inside the 10. And here the Bobcats are inside the red zone again, Keith, but can they finish? Well, they just put so much pressure on you with, with the little play action in the backfield, and then slide to the outside, Davenport's wide open, able to get it down inside the red zone, actually inside the 10. Bobcats trying to take the lead back. First and goal for the seven. Finley on the drive, five of six passing, 47 yards. And Davenport's the backfield with him. No Ishmael body here. Still no Bray Walker on the offensive line. Little flip to Connor Fox, and that's not going much of anywhere. Good play in space, TJ Smith. That's going to bring up second down and goal. Well, it's an interesting RPO. It, it, 
you, you have to play fake early here, and then Finley can run it if he wants to, but he sees it. He's got nowhere to go, flips it to the outside. It's actually for a negative yard on that pass. It'll be second and goal. Yeah, the move it back's about the eight yard line. 14th play of the drive coming up. Finley throws a dart towards Holbert, has the catch inside the five. And forced to the bounds by Stampley. Going to set up third down and goal. Talk about these long drives for the Bobcats. Longest of the year, 17 plays against ULM. Well, it's, it's a really nice catch. The ball was behind him, and he reaches back and makes the catch. Some changes now. Four-point play right here. And there's Holbert. Six catches already on six targets. You figure he's the big red zone threat here. Wilson also lined up at the bottom of the screen. Throw comes to Connor Fox and a walk-in touchdown. His first at Texas State. Well, this is a really well-designed play. Everybody to the short side of the field. Brent, and you go RPO. Fake it. Pull everybody up. Tight end is in the H-back position, and he just slides to the outside after the play fake, brings the linebacker down, pitch and catch touchdown. Well, you also saw all the attention to Hobart Drew. It looked like he was kind of a decoy there on the play. Fox wide open. And for the Bobcats, a tip of the cap to the Eagles special teams. That penalty rough or running into the punter. Kept the drive alive. The Bobcats capitalize. And they take the lead back. 14-10. Still early in the second. We got a good one here at Bobcat Stadium on ESPN Plus. Back out at Bobcat Stadium, Texas State. Impressive drive, aided by a key special teams penalty, but 15 plays, almost eight minutes off the clock, 75 yards. And the Bobcats have the lead once again. Back and forth we go. It's 14 to 10. A couple of nice third down conversions on the drive, including the touchdown. Mm -hmm. uh, did a nice job again, as you mentioned, extended because of the running into the kicker penalty. Defense is well rested on the other side. Probably at this point of the game with 1045 second quarter. Eagles haven't really had all of their game plan of their scripted plays run so far. So it's interesting, but that's what happens when you have your opponent has an eight minute drive. That's a great point, Keith. The Bobcats have tripled the Eagles in plays run 30 to 10. Advantage Texas State. Davis Brin has thrown four passes for 14 yards. And the kickoff from James Buchanan, the big return earlier, lets it go. And the Eagles come uh, come out on offense, trailing by four. And again, the big target keep, Caleb Hood for Davis Brin. This guy can make plays arguably the best receiver numbers in team history. Well, he's got 66 receptions on the season already, 681 yards, four touchdowns. And he's a guy you just see his career numbers, six 100-yard games, 217 career receptions. So far, Caleb Hood, only one catch for a single yard, but as Keith and I were talking about, just not many plays run yet for Georgia Southern. The script could very well still be in play. Here's White, big part of that script. Boy, what a day he's had. White, of course, that 39-yard gallop for a touchdown early in the game. This carry good for 13. He's having himself a ball game. Yeah, he's having a good ball game. And we talked about it in the open, one of our keys. Got to establish the running game. Running game's been outstanding for the Eagles. Played well here two years ago. Then a 38-30 Eagle win in that game. White's found the end zone twice. Has found it once today. Another good run for White. Spilled over by Mills at the 35 on a gain of seven. Nice job of those guys up front. Two tackles, both named Miller. It's unusual. Right tackles Miller, left tackles Miller. That is Brian on the left, Rashid on the right. Really good veteran offensive line for Georgia Southern. Here's Bryn, spins out to Caleb Hood, who spins away to his right for a good gain and a first down to the Bobcat 46. Nice route that time, really sold it like he was going to go down and it came back in a square end, was right there, easy pitch and catch for the first down. Not somebody you can contain much, Hood, 
averaging over eight catches a game, fourth in the nation, second of this game. And just like that, the Eagles on the move. Fort play the drive coming up. Figure the scoreboard's getting lit up today, and there's David Badinga, his first carry. And again, this Eagles running back group is down. O.J. Arnold, that's a huge loss for Georgia Southern. Yeah, he, he's their power back, and he gets a lot of snaps throughout the year. So you might see more of Badinga, but only 15 yes. carries all season coming into the day. That one, no gain. Second down and 10. Here's Bryn, and Bryn taken down for a sack. This Bobcat defense at times can feast on opposing quarterbacks. That time is Chance May. Now, great coverage. That's a covered sack. He was there, set, looks left, looks right. Nothing there. By that time, defense gets to him. Third and long. If you remember the Bobcat sacks, Gunnar Watson three times last week, second of the conference in sacks. That's their second today. But we have seen the Eagles convert in third and long. Did so early in the game on third and 15 for a touchdown. Bren pressure throws and it's caught, but short of the sticks is Hood at the 40. And Bren got decked as he threw the football. Oh, that's a really nice pass right there. All the way across the field. Knew he was going to get hit. Has to stand in that pocket. And I think they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Good pitch and delivery to make this an, an opportunity to go for it at the 40. Yeah, that play call makes fourth down here manageable now. Fourth and five, and the Eagles have been excellent at fourth down this year. Eight of nine. Second highest conversion rate of the country. Needing five yards here. Rush coming, Bryn. Off his back foot throws that one to the sidelines, incomplete, and the Bobcats will take over on downs. No, they just heated him up. You're right. Brought more people than they had to defend. Timeout. And we got a timeout on the field following a big fourth down stop for the Bobcats. Bobcats the ball leading 14 to 10 halfway through the second. Bobcats defensively just got a big fourth down stop when Coral's got more of that unit for head coach G.J. Kenney. Yeah, Brant, we've talked about Texas State's offense. They've proven to be one of the most explosive offenses in the country, and their defense has shown some inconsistencies this season. However, when you talk to head coach G.J. Kenney, the biggest concern is getting off the field on third down as Texas State's defense has allowed teams to convert nearly 50% of the time. Kenny has challenged his defense to come up with big stops tonight, just like the one they just had, and allow this offense to get in a, in a groove, emphasizing the importance of that complimentary football and keeping TJ Finley in rhythm. All right, thank you, Coral. Offense taking over after the turnover on downs, and that is a high pass reeled in by Ashton Hawkins flying down the far sideline. Fumbles the football, but the officials say that Hawkins was out of bounds first. Bobcats dodge a bullet there. This play stands for Ashton Hawkins and another big play for this pass offense for Texas State. Right, just nice job going up the field, and it, yeah, he comes down on his head. His head is on the ground before the football comes out. So he is down by contact, so to speak, is at the next level. But that's what he would. Huge play right there, though. So, again, the ruling that Hawkins down before the ball came out, not being out of bounds. The replay officials are giving it a look to see if this should be reviewed. Reason for the delay here. Our green vest on the sidelines says, no, we're good. Call stands. So, no review. Goes down as a 37-yard pickup. On oh, the first catch of the game for Hawkins. Bobcats getting it back to Hawkins on the reverse, and Hawkins wrapped up, going to lose about three yards there on the play. Well, the Eagles have been really disciplined on some of these trick plays the Bobcats have run. Oh, there's no question. They do not allow you to get the corner. You're trying to get the corner right here. They keep feathering it, keep feathering it, pushing it to the outside. You know what? That sideline doesn't miss many tackles. 
Again, Bartholomew on the play for Jordan Southern. Inside of six minutes to go. Bobcats looking to add a four-point lead. T.J. Finley so far, numbers really impressive. 14 of 16, 171 yards, couple of scores. Bobcats the 25, Motti to his left. Motti inside the 15-yard line. Oh, move the chains down to the 10. Ishmael Motti having a big day himself. Yeah, and, and Cole Wilson with a good block. Wide receivers have got a block. Watch Monty bounces this to the outside. You can see Wilson right here doing a good job holding his guy off. Gets him an extra three or four yards down inside right at the 10 yard. It's first and goal. Bobcats have racked up over 230 yards of offense. The Eagles under 100 so far. They have dominated time of possession. Nearly doubling that of Georgia Southern. Finley make that Malik Hornsby or no that was Finley that type of play we see run typically one you see for Hornsby who we have yet to see in this game it's going to bring up second down uh, he does go to a little play action and it, it, it's a read and you're, you're you're reading it his read was to pull it it's forward three yards on the play some changes a couple of tight ends in the game for the Bobcats here that allows the defense time to substitute Bobcats go big, the Eagles go big. They bring in their biggest defensive lineman, Latrell Bullard. There, look at Davon Gilmore, one of the linebackers for the Eagles. Second down and goal. Georgia Southern showing a blitz. Here it comes. Finley fires, caught, diving for the end zone. Wilson, touchdown. That's you have, how you pay off a wide receiver for doing his job blocking. This is an outstanding route in man coverage right at the bottom of your screen. Coming right at you, you'll see this football. This is just a great route. Sells it to the inside, bounces it back out, dives for the five line. Fifth touchdown catch of the year for Cole Wilson. One of the nine incarnate Ward transfers into the program over the offseason. And the Bobcats, after coughing up the ball, have since responded with back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. This one good for 60 yards and six plays and a three-touchdown day for T.J. Finley. Point after makes it 21 to 10. Bobcats looking pretty smooth in offense. The Eagles need to respond. Down by 11 late in the first half. Boy, Keith, to G.J. Kenny was looking for a big game out of his quarterback today. He's got it. T.J. Finley has locked it as we've seen in a few weeks. He's done a nice job of moving his feet, finding the openings, and, boy, delivering the football on time. Uh, that was an outstanding route, hitting perfectly as he's fading to the outside, got him into the end zone. Other than one botched snap, yeah. it's been almost a perfect first half of football. Four Offensively yeah. for the Bobcats. Yeah, four drives for the Bobcats. Haven't really been stopped in any of them. Three of those have ended in touchdowns, the exception of the aforementioned turnover on goal to go. Ensuing kickoff into the end zone. 21 to 10. Bobcats on top. A lot coming up at the half here on ESPN Plus. We're going to talk a lot about the Sun Belt. A lot happening in the conference as we flip to the month of November. Look at the halftime scoreboard. And stats and highlights in the first half here as well. Got a big game here today. Eagles looking to remain at the driver's seat of the East for the Bobcats. It has been nine long years since they were last bowl eligible. They can become that if they win today. Yep. Huge opportunity. 346. Ready to go here. Here's Bryn. Stands, delivers, high picks. Intercepted by Brian Holloway. The pressure is coming. Brent felt it, throws it to coverage, and the Bobcats take over. Just giving ground. As he gets pushed outside, Holloway does a great job. That's a great catch to go with it. But you feel the pressure. He's pushing, pushing to the left. Tries to drop it in over the top. Holloway underneath as a linebacker. Does a nice job to come up with the pick. I'm going to say he's down at the 36-yard line. First 
time that you see the Bobcats take over in Eagle territory here with a great chance to get some separation in this game. First time the Bobcats have forced a turnover in close to a month. None forced over the past two games. Huge pick there from Brian Holloway. The 13th interception of the year thrown by Davis Brent. Now there's Captain America getting his sideline congratulations from his teammates. Bobcats on a 14-point scoring run with the ball again. And Eagle territory, blitz coming from Georgia Southern. Finley fires for Hobart over the middle. That play's been there all day. And Hobart takes it inside the 20 and down to the 17, gains 19 yards. Boy, the inside seam route has been there, as you mentioned, all day long. Just a nice route to the inside. Inside leverage as a receiver. Nobody there. Pitch and catch inside the red zone. Feels like these Bobcat receivers are getting a ton of cushion right now. And again, the secondary is playing off for the Eagles. Play fake. Finley pressure. Finley takes a sack. Now that is a large... A large fall, sorry, Keith, on the sack there for the Eagles. Yeah, I, was, I shouldn't have jumped, but I just, it was the first time we've seen that RPO not work. It, it, the, the little play action, lineman didn't buy in. Time he raised up out of that to get rid of the football right there in his face. And he didn't have any place to go with it. He's, he makes the play fake and he looks up and no time to find a receiver at that point because the pressure was right there. Fall was in his face, got him on the ground. Again, remember, Texas State's offensive line without Bray Walker. I think they're going to take this down and take a timeout here. Yeah, play clock winding down, and G.J. Kenny will do just that. So a timeout taken by G.J. Kenny with 2.20 to go. 21 to 10, the Bobcats on top and try to capitalize off the pick thrown by Davis Brim. So the Bobcats are going to beat the Eagles for the first time in 18 years here today. These two met for the first time in 2005, then a 1AA playoff game. Georgia Southern was a national championship regular, six national titles. Bobcats are making their first ever 1AA appearance. The Eagles led by 19 points with just over 16 minutes to go. The Bobcats overcame that deficit, scoring 34 unanswered on the way to reaching the 1AA National Semifinals to date. That is the largest lead ever blown by Georgia Southern. That is the only win the Bobcats have ever had in the series since then. The Eagles 5-0 against Texas State. Out of the timeout, second and 13. Finley stands, delivers. Wilson kind of dropping into the buckets, but it's incomplete. In the back left corner of the end zone, Wilson just out of bounds. Well, they come with a max blitz. And Finley stays in the pocket. Offensive line gives him some opportunity, lays it up. Wilson with an outstanding catch. Just yeah. cannot get a foot down on the back pylon corner. I wonder if they may look at this and look like Wilson trying to get that right foot down, but I don't know if he had possession when he did, and this is not being reviewed. Third and 13. One of the few misfires for Finley today, and the Bobcats are going to have to time take out. another timeout. This is their second timeout of the first half. 30 seconds. Well, the 40-second clock was going down, and, and you, you see that, and everybody starts still looking around for the place. So I had to call another timeout, so back-to-back -back timeouts. But, you, you, got, you know, you take this timeout, they're going to let them, you know, the replay booth gets an opportunity to see this one more time. Uh, when I first looked at it, I felt like he was out of play when, by the naked eye, but he did hold on to get a chance to look at it again right here. So Wilson, that, see that right toe kind of catches some of the pellets? Trying to keep in bounds. But I just don't know if he had possession when that foot came down. A replay official, Terry Walters, again, not electing to take a second look. So the call stands. 
And with that, third down at 12. Middle of the field's been open a lot now. Much different looking defensive formation. The linebackers have backed off. A lot of soft coverage here from Georgia Southern. Finley steps up on the quarterback draw. Finley with a big frame leaning forward inside the 15 to the 13-yard line well shy of the first down. And now the Eagles put a timeout. Once, once some more. The Eagles want some more clock after this possession for the Bobcats to do something with the ball with about two minutes to go. Well, it's going to be, you, you got to take the points here. Mm -hmm. if, if this was, you know, fourth down and, and, and two or three, you might think about it, but it's a full five yards. And take advantage of the miscue, the turnover. See if you can put some points on the board. One of the interesting things, we talked about it before the game, you and I did. For the Bobcats, they've been outscored in the second half, 132 to 106. So it's important to get as many mm -hmm. points in the first half the way the second halves have gone this season for the Bobcats. It's funny you mention that because the Eagles have been a very good second quarter team this year. It's been the highest scoring quarter of the season, but they have not scored in the second quarter today. And so the decision from G.J. Kenny, honoring Keith's wishes here, take the points. And here's Shipley, who has hit eight field goals over his last three games. And this 30-yard attempt is good. And puts the Bobcats on top, 24 to 10. Just saw a kick made by Mason Shipley. And it's funny, on the topic of kickers, Georgia Southern, has a couple of their own playing at the next level. Currently two great ones, by the way. Tyler Bass and Young Wei Koo Bass with the Buffalo Bills. Closing in on 100 career field goals already with the Bills, one of the premier teams in the league. And Koo is having a great career himself with Atlanta currently. Began his NFL journey in 2017. Was named to the Pro Bowl in 2020 with Atlanta. Both players have since signed some sizable kicker contracts and representing the Eagles well at the next level. Hey, you're absolutely right. It, 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 that Metrodome, Koo has been outstanding in the Metrodome. I mean, in, in the Metro, <laughs> in the Mercedes Dome in Atlanta. I, I, I'm not sure that, I, that he's missed a kick there. I don't believe so. He mentioned the Metrodome. That's where the Vikings used to play. Yes. I used to I played a little and baseball You played there. baseball there. What <laughs> am I saying? You played the Twins there a few times. So after the field goal drive, Bobcats kick off. Buchanan watches her go into the end zone. And that'll bring out the Eagles offense. Again, it's, it can be a very high scoring offense. Fast pace with two minutes with a couple of timeouts. Should be plenty of time. This is a big possession here, Keith, for Georgia Southern. Brent just threw a pick. Now you want to counter that with some points here. Yeah, and you want to bounce back. And the other part of this for me is, is it's all about, you know, you get into your two-minute offense about that first down play. Can you get something positive, get to the line of scrimmage, and get rolling? That first first down usually ignites a two-minute offense. Brent so far, really quiet day. Four of eight, 31 yards. Just has not been on the field much. Here, look at a throw. Pressure is coming, and Brent gets rid of it. Throws a dart to Hood at the 30-yard line. That's going to pick up about four, maybe five. The clock will keep ticking. Ah, nice catch by Hood, too, coming back to his quarterback. The Eagles have had the ball for just over eight minutes so far. Rush coming again off his back foot. That's short hops, incomplete. Looking for Queeley. Just like that, two quick plays, and now it's third down. Yeah, they had a little spin move in the defensive front, to, up front, and got some pressure. Pin their ears back here on third down. Coming into the day, Brent, second of the country in completions per game behind only Shadur Sanders of Colorado. Today, he has five. That's number seven, Hood. It's coming in motion. Final right at you. 100 seconds of the half. The Eagles trying to extend the drive. Brent, pressure coming, tipped and incomplete. Burgess, the receiver, looking for a flag against Josh Eaton. That is a three and out for Georgia Southern. 
Now, I told you before the game, I thought the key to this game would be the cornerback, cornerback play of the Bobcats, and that's a huge one right there to force the three and out by Eaton. That's a good point there, Keith, because you look at the receivers, Burgess, Hood, Cobb, Queeley, it is a tremendous quadrant of receivers for the Eagles. This secondary will be challenged. Hood, four catches, Queeley, one, Burgess, Cobb, none. And here's the punt from Alex Smith. True freshman punter. That was close to being tipped. Line drive punt. Goes out of bounds. At around the 36-yard line. So a minute 28 left with a timeout remaining now. It's the Bobcats who have time to play out on here. Look at TJ Finley. And again, Keith looking for that bounce back game. Just hasn't looked himself the last two weeks. He looks like the Baylor Finley that we saw in the opener. Yeah, he, he's been very comfortable. He's moved his feet well. He's had great positioning of the football, had it up, had it ready to go. Hey, with a minute 28, you're, you're taking over your own 40 yard line, even though you're down to one timeout. You got a great opportunity to come away with some points here. You see, season splits and Finley closer to the wins guy than losses today. Finley. Throws that quick to Holbert, looking to get out of bounds. Eagles keep him in play across the 45 with a minute 20 to go. I think if he had to do that over, he would step and move to the out of bounds and stop the clock. Clock is running. Again, one timeout left for Texas State coming up on the final 60. Same play to Holbert. This time gets out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with a minute four to go, but he didn't get the first down. I think you think first down first and then points. You could see a running play here. Everybody split out. Body in the backfield. Third down and two. Bobcats offenses look really sharp in third down today. Four for eight. Here's the blitz. Here's the pass. And here's Hobart. A catch and a first down. But stops Finley, the clock. Finley has been outstanding. Perfect. Gets the snap, sets his feet, delivers the football. He threw the ball before Herbert came out of his break right there. Gets the first down and stops the clock. Already the 10th catch for Hobart. With Joe Dirts having himself a day. Just shy of 100 yards. He has hit that watermark four times this year. Here's Finley. Steps, fires. What a throw. What a move in the open field. Hawkins. Trying to find the sidelines and does. Good all-around play between Finley and Hawkins. Uh, Hawkins bounces to the inside. Going to get this call here. Is, this, is there a late call? It looked like it was tripping to me. I, th I thought he reached out and tripped Hawkins and didn't really tackle him. There's conversation right at the 31-yard line here. Right in front of G.J. Kenny. It's our head official, Trentis Livingston. I didn't see a flag. Mm -mm. Meeting with his crew here. Body language from the Eagles doesn't look promising because the flag was just now thrown. Well, watch right here at the end. It looked like to me he just reached out and tripped him Trenton, with his foot. On the defense, number 22. 15 yard penalty from the end of the line. Automatic first down. Good eyes there, Keith. You, you caught it. Mark Stampley, the second, stuck his foot out. Watch the back end of the play here. I mean, it, it, you don't hear it call very often, but there's no question that he put his mm -hmm. foot out intentionally to trip him. Boy, that's a huge break because now 51 seconds, one time out in your pocket. This is touchdown zone now. You're in the red zone. You got plenty of time if you're T.J. Finley here. Bobcats in the red zone for the fifth time already. Here's Finley looking, looking, stands, runs. Finley on the run inside the 10. Finley galloping for the goal line, and he is in for the touchdown. Doesn't put it down very often, Grant. But when he does with that big frame, he's tough to bring down. This turns it upfield, and once he got that momentum right here, when he decides to put it down and tucks it away right here, watch him 
turn on the Jets and then powers his way into the end zone. You said it. He's not the most flight of foot, but man, at 6'7", pushing 260, he's so hard to bring down. That big frame of his finds the end zone, and he's accounted for all four touchdowns in the first half, 31 to 10. Bobcats on top with that turnover that Finley had on the bat snap exchange seems like ages ago now. Player was down for Georgia Southern. He's up now, and you're right. To answer your question, it does seem an attorney to go. This offense for the Bobcats is good as we've seen it all season long. I mean, it really has only stopped itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've had one field goal attempt where they did get stopped, and they had a punt situation, but running into the punter allowed that drive to continue that went in and turned into points. And out Clay Held visiting with the crew here. This team now trailing by 21 points. Bobcats looking to beat a team with a winning record in the month of November for the first time since 2014. Boy, that year keeps coming up, doesn't it? That last win was against Arkansas State on a Thursday night nine years ago. This is an extended conversation. Elton with the referee here. Clay Helton, second year, Georgia Southern. Previously at USC, 46 wins as head coach of the Trojans. This is the second year of Georgia Southern. In year two at USC, the Trojans won 10 games and won the Rose Bowl. So typically these teams in year two play really well. They have been all year to this point, six and two, but now trailing by three scores with 42 seconds to go in the second. And the kick fielded by Buchanan. He will take it out. Buchanan had a good return earlier. And going to take this across the 20 yard line. 35 seconds left. The Eagles do have two timeouts. But there will be adjustments to be made for Georgia Southern, Keith, both offense and defense whenever we, we hit halftime. Yeah, I think it, it, the adjustments offensively, they've got to win first down. That was something I felt like the Texas State needed to do. To, ha to have a good ball game today. Well, they've been behind the chains all night, haven't got their offense in rhythm at any point in this first mm -hmm. half, really. What well, tough half for Davis Brent. Gonna have a lot of work to do in the second half. The Eagles scored 44 last week against Georgia State, second highest point total of the year. They've been held to 10 so far. And you're seeing a, a, an, an energy level from this Bobcat defense that we really didn't see much of last week. You know, they've set the tone just as much as the offense has been spectacular mm -hmm. with 31 points in the first half. They forced a turnover, got a turnover on I downs. I don't think they're going to snap another play. Yeah, the Eagles looks like they're going to get ready for the third quarter here. If you're the Bobcats looking for a bounce back game, you're halfway through this one, you're there. Texas State, an impressive First half hour of football. Once down 10 7, the Bobcats in the half with 24 unanswered points. They take a 31 10 lead into the break off the arms and legs of TJ Finley. Halftime in San Marcos. Bobcats up three touchdowns. Back out at Bobcat Stadium, about ready for the start of the third quarter. 31-10, Bobcats on top along with Keith Moreland. I'm Bray Freeman. Keith, again, you have to love November football. The games mean a lot more. Bobcats being tasked with playing in one of the biggest games in November in a long time, and they've answered the call. Well, they've been outstanding offensively. They've done everything they wanted to do. They've really established things on offense. It, it sort of set the tone with their first possession of the game. They go down, and then the answer... Here comes Georgia Southern right back with a great return. And then this is the, really the only mistake of the first half. And just like that, the Eagles come back down the field and they take a 10-7 lead. Yeah, Jalen White with a huge 39-yard touchdown run 
But from that point on, it was all Texas State. The Bobcats offensively, you're always, you're always asking for balance, Keith. They were able to both run and pass, and maybe one of the biggest plays was that special teams penalty against Georgia Southern. Yeah, at that time in the ball game, it stopped it. It allowed Texas State to take it. It ended up being an 11 or 12 play drive, took them all the way down the field, and it's just been a great combination of Marty, Finley, He's had great receiver work on the outside. This is a great pitch and catch right here for the touchdown. And they have completely dominated. The only turnover for the Eagles in the first half, Holloway with the pick, turns into points. G.J. Kitty also told us he wanted Finley to spread the wealth, found three different receivers for touchdowns, and then found the end zone himself as the Bobcats rattled off 24 and answer to end the first half. A look at the first half numbers, all Texas State. Look at total wow. yards, three to one in favor of the Bobcats, who are averaging close to seven yards per play. Uh, you, you looked at it. We we talked about the Eagles wanting to be able to run the ball. Well, 72 yards is nice, but on the other side of that, they they average 306 yards a game through the air. Only 36 in the first half. So 31-10, Bobcats on top here at the break. Now the Eagles will get the football to start the third quarter, and as you've noted, Key, Texas State has had some second half issues as of late. If you recall, they were the ones who led last week, albeit a smaller lead inning as Troy, it was 10-7. The Trojans came back. The Bobcats, as far as they're concerned, in a much better second half second half today. Yeah, Clay Helton, will, you know, he, he took his team in and he's gonna sit down and say, look, it, it, nothing went right for the first half. You almost gotta shelve it, not look at it, mm -hmm. not think about it. Hey, we get the ball to start the second half. Let's go down and make this a 14-point game by taking in the open half and going down the field. I look for them to open it up, be more involved in the passing game. Yeah, they've tried to do a little play action. I think it'll be more four verticals, I mean, four wide receivers and no play action here in the second half. G.J. Kenny told us earlier in the week that his team is right there. They're not sneaking up on anybody anymore, not sneaking up on the Eagles here. They lead by 21 as we start the second half. And here is Buchanan on the return. Out of his own end zone. Buchanan is wrapped up at around the 25-yard line. So Coral had a chance to visit with both head coaches during halftime. Coral, what they have to say? Grant, you talked about that second half Texas State had last week. Not so great. And that's what head coach DJ Kinney said. He said, we have to finish this, put this away, and play a whole four quarters of good football. That's what he's wanting to see from his team throughout the rest of this game. On the other side of things, Georgia Southern head coach Clay Helton told me their defense has to get stops on third down. They've been very efficient all season, but today they haven't been able to get it done, and they've just been on the field too long. Their offense has not been able to find a rhythm. They have to find some complimentary football. Grant? All right, first play of the half. Jalen White got hit by Chance Main to the backfield, so it's Hacker for loss, starts the second half for Texas State. Well, you've got a guy that's got 66 receptions already. You've got a couple other receivers in the mid 40s. You're going to have to find something, some rhythm, get some offense going where you can get the ball to your outside receivers. Again, Davis Bryn at the helmet quarterback for the Eagles. First year transfer out of Tulsa. 22 starts for the Golden Hurricane. Former MVP of the Myrtle Beach Bowl delivers a dart. And across the 30-yard line, close to first down yardage, is Marcus Sanders, Jr. Well, that was a good pitch and catch. Makes it a very manageable third down. And a jumbo package comes into the game. Two tight ends come in. Sanders had a big catch last week against rival Georgia State. 30-yard touchdown late in the first half. That is first catch of this game. Good for 10, third and one. The Eagles in the first half, two of five on third down. Saw some movement right side of the line. This is going to come back five yards. Just have been out of kilter offensively. Just haven't been able to uh, get into any kind of rhythm. They had five yard penalty. It changes. You'll have to go away from the jumbo package. You can see the right tackle just moves just a little early that time. And, and getting back to that point, they, they just haven't been able to establish, get anything going where they can get into mm -hmm. a rhythm. Seems like they're going a step forward, two back. Penalty on Bryson Broadway's the Eagles' fourth penalty of the game. 
From third and one to third and six, Brent feeling the heat. Let's it rip over the middle. He's got a first down. One of his better throws today, a strike to Dalen Cobb for a first down. Well, he did a really nice job avoiding the, the sack. I mean, he was coming. He had to take some time. He stepped up into the pocket and delivered that ball right on time. You can see he can feel the pressure, steps up right there, delivers it down the field. Biggest, maybe the biggest play of the game so far. Come out. After the first down catch, a Bobcat down on the field will step aside early in the third. Bobcats the lead, but the Eagles on the move on their first second half possession. Eagles on the move offensively, and they got a lot of beef up front. A couple of guys to highlight players that Clay Held has called his salty dogs. Brian Miller and Khalil Crowder between the two of them. 100 starts, or oh, close to 100 starts. 95. At Georgia Southern, combined 13 years of experience. Miller, the oldest player on this team, born in 1999. Try to help this offense. Get a jolt in the second half, trailing 31 to 10. Here's Bren loading up and throwing deep, and that's incomplete. Closest player was Joshua Thompson for the Eagles on that post route. Yeah, it's Thompson, bring up second Thompson down. Just ran more of a, a fly, didn't break it back to the inside. Bren thought he was going to come to the inside on a post and, and miscommunication down the field on first down. Mentioned Brian Miller, the left tackle, four years ago, 2019, near the end of fall camp. Suffers a non-contact hip injury. Took him over a year to come back from that. And has carved out a remarkable career since then at Georgia Southern. Second and 10. This is a receiver sweep. Pierce Cobb, who had a huge play last week against the Panthers. A 76-yard touchdown catch. That play good for about eight, maybe nine, third and short. Oh, he did a nice job. He planted that left foot. and He got north and south right here. And boy, when he did, he... Made it positive. It's going to be third and two. Four down territory here, down 21, third quarter. No, I think no doubt about that. Burgess comes to the sideline here for the Eagles. And Keith talked about it. That big back is great in these short yardage situations. O.J. Arnold not available tonight for Clay Hilton. Here's White. Runs into a blocker. White, second effort, but all he gives is a lot of scrimmage. Here comes fourth down. Now, nice push up front. Two defensive tackles do their job. Disrupted in the backfield. You'll see Bell coming in and sort of clean it up right there in the middle. Nice job. That's just good overall team defense. And changes on the defensive front for the Bobcats here on fourth down. Huge momentum play right here in this ballgame. Second fourth down attempt today for the Eagles. Who oh, the man in motion. Bren looking to throw. Throws that one incomplete over the middle looking for Burgess. This Bobcat secondary has been challenged today and they have come through in a big way. Caleb Ford demand breaks off that play. The corners just making good plays and they needed to. Fighting through this. Second fourth down opportunity for the Eagles. They come up empty. Huge defensive stop. Momentum change here. First drive of the third quarter. Well, this defense has been up to the task today, facing an Eagle offense, which is putting up north of 32 points a game. One of the most improved passing offenses in the country this year. They have held a passing game to 78 yards on 16 attempts from Davis Brent. That's the third down play helped make the fourth down play mm -hmm. just because it Third down, if they get any yardage, they'll run it again on fourth down, but they lost yardage. So not the start the Eagles needed in this third quarter. Bobcats take over on offense. Second turnover on downs. Here's Motti lassoed by Marquez Watson's trend. We haven't really called his name a lot today. Hasn't really been in there on a ton of plays. This play for Motti, good for five. Yeah, he's just big, strong. Gets that right paw on his shoulder and just rips him to the ground. But you're right. We haven't called his name. On pace for his second straight season with over 100 tackles. Motti closing in at 1,000 yards this season. He's up to 84 in the day. He came in with 856 or something, right? Mm -hmm. 
Here's Finley, lets it fly for Holbert. And what an adjustment from Joey Holbert going high and bringing it down to the 29-yard line. What a catch. His back shoulder throw, as good as you can throw the football, give his receiver a chance. Still a remarkable catch to go up and bring it down and hold on to it. You know the story, Keith, on the Joe Dirt nickname, right? Because Hobart runs dirty routes. That route was filthy from Hobart there. Hobart over 100 yards for the fifth time this year, fourth time in conference play. He's got a buck 16. That last play good for 26. Finley rips one over the middle. Guess who? Or no, it's not Hobart. That is Bo Corrales. It's his second catch all year. Uh, he just runs a great route. Sells it down, deep crosser. Clears the linebacker with the back. Now going quickly right to the line of scrimmage. That NASCAR pace you talk about all the time. Finley play fake, throwing for Corrales in the short corner. And that's broken up by Bartholomew. Going to bring up second and 10. Uh, just a little bit behind him. Corrales might have been a little tardy. You know, that connection not as good because he hasn't he hasn't caught a lot of balls. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a real timing play, that back shoulder throw at the goal line. Yeah, Corrales missed the first seven games of the season due to injury. Made his debut last week. Hasn't really played a lot of college football over the past two years because of injury. And now a throwaway here from Finley. Kind of a broken play there. Go yeah, it's, the timing was off. There's something happened at the snap because we caught a blitz. There's no foul. Intentional grounding. Number three. So now all of a sudden, you go from a first down at the 12 to third down at the 12. Third and 10. Bobcats have had a good day in third down so far. Five for nine. Look for the Eagles to heat him up here. I would think some type of blitz package. Five on the line of scrimmage, six in the box. They've sacked Finley three times already. And here it comes. Finley steps up on the run. Finley, second time today. Catch the blitz, and it splits right in the middle. No spy in that situation. Finley reads it early. He says, oh, there's just opens up right in front of him. Once he does that, he takes his time. He could coast into the end zone. How about this? And opening days, opening drive of the second half. A 28-point lead with conversion to come. 27. And then Finley, the step back jumper, the celebration there. Hey, basketball season starts on Monday. In college hoops, and the extra point is good. Wait us all, Texas State, the Bobcats of State, a 28 point lead. TJ Finley having himself a ball game in his house in San Marcos. Again, Joey Holbert having himself a pretty good game today. 11 targets, 11 catches, over 100 yards, a touchdown to go along with it. Keith, he's put his stamp on this game. No, no question about it. He, he's done a nice job with the out routes and the big conversions on third down. And this, these are the in routes and also where you know you're going to get blown up. But this, this was the best catch of, the, of all of them oh, right man. there, that back shoulder. And how about the chemistry those two have? Finley and Holbert, we'll hear more about Holbert from Coral in a moment. Bobcats kicking off after a six play, 61 yard drive. They have faced no resistance today. The Bobcats have either scored a touchdown or a field goal on all but one of their possessions. The exception was a fumble inside the tent. Uh, 374 yards of total offense on 51 plays so far in the ballgame. Ensuing kick. Fielded by Badinga. Badinga kind of ran into Buchanan there, and Badinga corralled around the 20. All right, Coral, tell us more about Joey Holbert, Joe Dirt. Yeah, Brent, you mentioned his stamp on the game today, but honestly, he's had a stamp on this season for this Texas State offense. And, you know, that started in their first game against Baylor. He and TJ Finley have had such a great chemistry, and that started so, so fast. When we asked him how they got to uh, develop that chemistry so early, he said, you know, it's because they have a similar understanding and approach to the game. This Texas State coaching staff noted that Hobart 
has a remarkably high football IQ, and he also brings a sense of joy to the team, and he really never has a bad day. He's a, he's a great bonus to the Texas State offense. Brant? All right, thank you, Cool. Of course, a couple of games ago, Holbert, some clutch plays in the comfort behind win over ULM, including the game-winning touchdown with 41 seconds to go. Yeah. It's just He's been outstanding. Yeah, it changes it. You look up, you're, you're down four scores. Nine minutes to go, third quarter. You're going to have to start putting in the air regular if you're the Eagles. Georgia Southern, really good at home this year, unbeaten in Statesboro, one and two on the road, albeit the road competition's been stiff. In Madison against Wisconsin in non-conference play at JMU and playing here in San Marcos. But the thing is, the Eagles have a road-heavy schedule to end the season three. Of their final four games, include today, are on the road. Yeah, got to find a way to win away from home, no question. This is a huge third down. Just cannot give it back to the Bobcats on a three and out right here. This is a must conversion. So far, the Bobcats defensively throughout the year struggling on third down. They've answered that call today. Britt has been harassed all day. High throw and what a catch. Queely going airborne to bring it down for Georgia Southern. But what a job to stay in the pocket, too. Not only a great catch, but what him. He knows he's going to get hit. Standing in the pocket, just gets rid of it as he gets hit from both sides. And how about that? Holding on to that football on the way down with one arm. Converted for the first down. A couple of good catches today for Queeley. Spent five years at Syracuse. Really good year for the Orangemen in 2020. Quick screen for Caleb Hood. Looking for some blocks. Don't really develop. Hood only gains three, and it's second and seven. Well, Holt just does it. Just, just a great job. Holton just, just that's your job as, as a safety, is you got to hold your ground. He holds his ground, turns it back to the inside. Holloway comes from the inside to help him. Yet another incarnate word transfer having an impact for G.J. Kenny in year one at Texas State. Second and six, Bren throws out with the defense converging around him. That's got to be intentional grounding. Well, G.J. Kenny is out from his coaching box begging for the flag. Does a great job standing up, using the streak to be there, and then gets it out of his hands. But there wasn't a receiver in 15 yards mm. of the football. This is a spot foul, also lost it down. A huge part of this is the loss of down. So they retroactively do apply the intentional grounding. So again, that, that Texas State pressure. Defensive coordinator Donovan Patty really dialing, dialing it up today. Yeah, getting back to where we said, I mean, at one point three weeks ago, they led the nation in tackles for losses. It's been M.O. for Patkey's defenses, and in Carter Ward last year, they led the nation in tackles for loss. Have four today, three sacks of Bryn. One of the best games they played all season. Here's Bryn. Pressure coming again. Side steps. Bryn throws late to the sidelines, and the catch not made. Incomplete. Going for Cobb. Too close to the sideline, and Georgia Southern's going to have to pump the ball away. Now that the pressure, again, talking exactly what we were talking before the snap, the pressure forced him out of the pocket quickly, and then the, the receivers are having to come off the routes, come back to the football. He does buy enough time outside, but the ball was out of bounds. When it was caught, it's going to lead to a punt. Punt coming from Alex Smith. There's Hobart back to return. Left footed punt from Smith. Hobart, the fair catch, shot the 25 yard line. Talked about G.J. Kenny. What a year, a year ago, and a Carter Ward takes over this program trying to turn it into a contender. Look what he's done in year one. Keith, the numbers from a year ago compared to this season. Well, I think the two things that came off the board when you and I talked uh, back early this summer, uh, we talked about it. I thought one of the first things that, that we would see is an improvement in scoring. Not necessarily how are you going to do, but it's just going to come up from 21.1 points per game 
I think that's the thing that jumps off the page. 14 points, that's two touchdowns more a game. That's going to lead to wins, and you can see the difference in five wins already going with the, for six today. Now looking for win number three in the Sun Belt. After forcing the punt, here's a run for Davenport. Davenport takes that across the 30 to the 32 on a gain of about six. Uh, they'll, they'll still go pretty quickly. They like to run snaps, but I don't think it'll be. Well, here comes NASCAR quick. And this, this team kind of feels like they only know one pace here, Keith, as Davenport is sent back after a short gain at the 34. Going to bring it third down, four to go. Bobcats dropped a week two game at UTSA, came back the following week, beat Jackson State, putting up 77. Lost their second Sun Belt game in Louisiana, came back the following week. A fourth quarter comeback winning against ULM. And coming off a loss against Troy, it looks like another bounce back effort today. Here for G.J. Kenny and his team up 38 to 10. Well, you, you look at the scenario of, of, of where you're at right now with this ball game with an opportunity. There's so many things that are involved. Mm -hmm. One, six win, no question. The other part is, you put yourself one game behind Troy. Yes, they had the victory last week here, but also you're still trying to find a way to represent the West in the Sun Belt Championship. So not only did this win get you bowl eligible, and that's a wonderful thing, but you're in November, wins are so important because if you win this one, it gives you a chance to go up next week, which albeit on the road with an opportunity to, to you know, stay close in the race. You talk to this team, and certainly making a bowl game is a goal, but they want that to, to become an expectation. All right, we're going to go to a bowl game. What, what, what else can we do? Yep. Still plenty of time to go in this one. Over 20 minutes left with the Bobcats, a sizable four touchdown lead. Third and four Davenport again, this time a first down and almost breaking free. He was one jersey tackle from Watson Trent away from going to the house. Uh, just uh, how strong is he to hold him down? It looked like Davenport was running right out of it, threw it right here, just enough to get on that jersey and get him to the ground, but a first down. Here's Finley back to work. Finley stepping up. Finley tucks it away, trying to protect the football first and foremost. Tyrell Davis on the tackle for the Eagles, and a Bobcat is slow to get up. Extracurricular going on here. Dorian Strong was the one who was slow to get up. I do notice, by the way, Bray Walker is back out there for the Bobcats at right guard. Well, that is that's a that's a big catch. I didn't catch that. These numbers, as we get darker, a little a bit harder to see. <laughs> I can tell you. How do you miss him, Keith? He's six seven three fifty. Well, he's he's a big man. I shouldn't. You, one of the largest human beings I've ever come across, Walker. Here's a blitz from Georgia Southern. Davenport, a big heavy dose of him on this drive, bouncing it to his left, shedding a tackle. Davenport, good run. Good effort, bouncing off of a couple of Eagles to the 40-yard line, 15 yards, and this offense not slowing down. Yeah, doing a great job, and that's, that's, a, that's those five guys up front getting the job done. Well, the way the Bobcats have controlled time of possession has been a sight to behold today. They've held, held the ball for over 23 minutes. The Eagles just over 15. And a lot of these scoring drives of theirs have been long, drawn-out drives, too. Multiple plays each time. Converting. Moving the chains. It's one of the top first-down offenses in the country, Texas State. Here's Hobart on the screen. Breaks a tackle. And Hobart still running. Hobart banged out of bounds. Thought he may have tightrope the sideline. They're going to mark him out. Meanwhile, the Eagle defender who made the play, Tyrion Lee, is down on the knee at the 15. What a run. Gets contact after the catch and then gets hit there and then turns it upfield and almost stays in bounds. Lee Axel got involved in the play itself, but he is down right now. Get a first year transfer from Texas AM being looked at here. That play good for 14 for Holbert, a buck 30 on the day for him. And Lee's going to go to the sideline here for Georgia Southern. Well, 
another red zone opportunity for the Bobcats. This offense has been spectacular today. It has been rhythm since we started the ball game. I mean, right out of the first first drive, and it stayed in rhythm the entire time. And a lot of that is because those big guys up front. You know what it felt like last week's red zone turnover against Troy impacted the Bobcats remainder of the game. The red zone turnover early in this one, they shrugged it off. Yep. And they have responded in a huge way. Got to grow each week, Brent. It, it, it. Yep. Seventh trip of the red zone today. They have come away with four touchdowns and a field goal so far in the first six and the turnover. Davenport again. Davenport sheds a tackle in the backfield. Davenport dropped at the five yard line. Boy, he has looked really good on this drive so far. I like his vision too. Watch right here. He's got one guy, he's got to make him miss. He does, gets to the outside and well, I tell you what, then finish. Cut back to the inside and finish. Right back to work, Davenport. Bulldozing his way inside the five. Tracked down at about the three yard line. Another long drive for the Bobcats and Davenport shaking off Motti. Telling him, go back, I got this. You talk about a guy who wants the ball right now. Yeah, that's the area of Davenport. That you know, let me finish this one. He's had an excellent drive here. Eight carries, 58 yards for Davenport. You can see he's laboring some, but he wants to stay in. You see the Bobcats call his number. Second and goal. Finley on the RPO. Finley is stonewalled at around the two. Trying to find the end zone for a third time today. I tell you what, you've talked about it. That's a big man you're stopping right there. 260 pounds going forward. Boy, I tell you what. That was a good blow. Now jumbo package into the game for the Bobcats. I mean, imagine somebody Joey Bosa's size who can throw the football. That's kind of what T.J. Finley is. That's what he is. He's a defensive end. Jumbo big package into the game here. Just became a dad for the first time last week. Congratulations to he and his fiance welcoming twins as Davenport leaps into the end zone for the touchdown. And then big guys up front got the great push off of the line of scrimmage. And Davenport finished. What a drive for him individually. And that, and that drive just outstanding through the air and on the ground. What a job getting into the end zone. When Davenport said he wanted the football, he got the football and takes it in for the touchdown. Third touchdown of the year for Davenport, second on the ground. And the Bobcats are pulling away. 11 plays, 74 yard drive. They really have not been stopped at all today. And the point after makes it 45 to 10. All Texas State. And they are closing in on that coveted sixth win here in their house at Bobcat Stadium. Not a score they many saw coming. All Texas State, Bobcats have been dominant over a Georgia Southern team, which has been one of the best teams in the East Division this year. 45-10, all Texas State coming off yet another scoring drive capped off by the, by the Denario Davenport touchdown. 62 plays from scrimmage for 448 yards. You, you look at that, nearly twice as many plays as Georgia Southern, who only have 161 total yards in the game, Texas State has outgained them by 287 mm. yards at this point of the game. Such a great start, too, for the Eagles. Made some plays, special teams on defense, a huge third down run for White, but not much beyond that. Buchanan will take it out about five yards deep, and Buchanan won't reach the 15-yard line. So the Eagles come back out on offense, and you look at Texas State's defense, Keith, you talked about the secondary being challenged here today. They've come through with the way they have played against a really good Georgia Southern offense. But if we, now we take a look at quarterbacks, the top-rated transfer quarterbacks in the country. The grades came from ESPN.com. We're seeing two of them tonight, T.J. Finley and Davis Brin. Finley's had a great day for Brin against that Bobcat defense. It's been kind of tough. Yeah, he struggled a little bit today, but he's been under pressure. He's had to move around all day long. And this great play here to start this drive, though, 
That's Jalen White. Good carry there. White's been one of the few bright spots for the Eagles closing in at 100 yards for a third straight game. Got to have time. Quarterbacks can deliver the football, but they're under stress the whole time with pressure. It's hard for them to deliver the football. Great run here. Great block up front. Kick out block. Got him to the outside. In fact, with that run, White is over 100 for the third straight game. Players had a huge workload as of late. 11 carries so far tonight. Bren remains the game with the Eagles down 35. And there's White again off the right side. Uh, just to run an overload, put the man in motion, come back to the tight end side. And this really good play design, second time we've seen it on this drive. So far, Davis Bren talked about his night. Has been held under 100 yards passing. Playing with a lot of friends and family in attendance. Again, hometown of Bernie, about a stone's throw outside of St. Marcus. Here's White, meanwhile, turning on the Jets. Continue to be impressed by White. The Eagles have had so many great running backs over the years. Two of them currently in the NFL, Matt Breida and Jared McKinnon. White having a good Eagle career in his own right. Well, it's just a nice job blocking up front. Got into the second level before contact. And it's been all him on the ground. Timeout. This is their second timeout of 30 seconds. So the timeout taken by G.J. Kenny. With a little more than a minute to go in the third, 45 to 10. Texas State on top. You know, we talked with Coach Held earlier in the week. And he makes the decision to take over Georgia Southern a couple of years ago. And, you know, the Eagles have been running the option-based offense forever. Ever since yep. the great Irk Russell brought the program back in the early 1980s, Georgia Southern, once upon a time in the 2000s, got, got away from it. They brought it back. Coach Helton brings in this air raid style of offense, and they have welcomed it with open arms. He's embraced the history of Georgia Southern while utilizing his own tactics and the team made a bowl a year ago, sending us six wins right now, albeit a tough night, but he's been a good fit for the program. Yeah, he has, and, but you know, you got to find that trigger, man, when you want to run your style of offense. But right now, they're running football and running it well. Another first down pickup there for Jalen White. One of the things that Coach Shelton mentioned is that every day when he goes into the office, what does he see outside of his windows? Those six national championship flags waving. He understands the expectations and the and the winning tradition of Georgia Southern, and putting his own stamp on the program. The far 12 and nine his record as head coach is taking over. Here's Bryn lets it rip over the middle, and this is J.J. McAfee walks in for the touchdown on a great throw from Davis Bryn. Well, you establish the run as they did on this one. Go play action and. Brings the linebackers up, and boy, I tell you what, this is an easy pitch and catch, and then he just splits the defense into the end zone. This is an offense which will utilize the tight ends, the passing game. Really haven't seen a lot of that today. McAfee, second touchdown catch of the year, at four in this offense a year ago. Eagles' first touchdown since the opening quarter, and that is the 19th touchdown pass. Of the season for Davis Brent. So we talked about the Eagles program and the history of success. Really, no matter the level, Keith, you look, you go back to the 1AA FCS days against six national championships, 11 time conference champs. Since they joined the Sun Belt in 2014, the first year they won a conference championship, they've been to three bowls, about to go to a fourth. And or they, they've won three bowl games, I should say. And the all-time winning percentage. That's the one that jumps off the page to me. Yeah, in the modern era, it's 675 with close to 100 All-Americans. That means you're winning two out of every foot, three football games you uh, kick off. It, it, that is an impressive statistic, no question. And Clay Hilton's team just rattled off a five-play, 86-yard touchdown drive. But still plenty of wood to chop, down 28. 25 seconds to go in the third. That ended a scoring stretch for the Bobcats of 38 on answer. How about that? Wow. Motti back to return. Does have a kick return for touchdown this year. Game of the conference opener at Southern Miss. 
Mahdi's going to return here from his own goal line. Mahdi, oh, got wrapped up in a great open field tackle there for the Eagles. Prince Green on the tackle. And the Bobcats take over with a third quarter winding down. Well, Green just comes in there. This is a, whew, that's getting ripped to the ground right mm -hmm. there. He had a scene, too. I mean, he's the last line of defense, and Monty had a chance that that one could have gone a long way. Finley back out new to the offense. What a day so far. 23 of 28. Hmm. 16 yards shy of 300. Use his legs today, too. He has. He scored twice on runs. And on first down, Finley, quick throw, out to his left, and able to hit the tight end, Titus Lyons. Not somebody who sees the ball a lot. Good for about five yards there, and that might wind up being the final third quarter play. I'll take it to the other end here. So if you're the Bobcats, you're 15 football minutes away from becoming bowl eligible for the first time since 2014. Good game through three quarters if you're G.J. Kinney. It's time for your team to finish. Leading 45-17 at the end of three in San Marcos. Three quarters in the books from San Marcos. Is that, as you can see, boy, that second quarter may be Ooh. where the game was won to this point for Texas State. That's where the Eagles in 24 to nothing. The play of the quarterback so far. And it's been T.J. Finley's night for Davis Brin. Kind of a tough night of the offense against a ferocious pass rush. Well, he's been under stress all night long, no question about it. Great pick by Holloway on a play that was just a little bit underthrown, but Finley was just been spectacular, not only through the air, but on the ground tonight. Fourth quarter underway. Here's Motti working on a pretty good night of his own, closing in at 100 yards. And Motti with that carry will move the sticks on the first play of the fourth quarter. Big day for Joey Hobart, 12 catches. Body up to 91 yards rushing. But all Texas State so far leading 45-17. By the way, today is the final of a three-game homestand for the Bobcats. Next two on the road. Going to face some pretty good competition. Coastal Carolina is up next in Conway this coming week. And the week after, they go to Arkansas State. And the Red Wolves, all of a sudden, looking pretty good. An impressive win for them today over Louisiana. Yeah, no question about it. They're playing some of their best football. Again, it's November. November's when it starts to really count. To be going on the road is also another difficult thing in the Sun Belt. Here's Monty again. At that time, driven back, good pursuit there from Georgia Southern. Leader of the defensive charge, Justin Rhodes. Going to bring up third down and long. And a passing situation here. Trying to run some clock. If you're the Eagles, you're trying to force Texas State's first punt of the game. Technically, they had one earlier, but remember, there was yeah. a penalty in Georgia Southern that wiped it out. No pun since then. Bobcats, a healthy 8 of 12 on third down. Finley trying to continue his mastery on this down. Going to take off and run. He takes a hit instead of the 40-yard line. A hit by Kadri Jackson. And that will, in fact, send out Seamus O'Kelly for the first time for a punt here tonight. Yeah. Finley upset with himself, felt like he, he had a chance right here. He tries to cut it back to the inside and was a little bit off balance and didn't get a chance to use his full body strength to go mm -hmm. forward. And it's going to lead to a punt. Like you said, haven't seen this formation very often in this game. Maybe one short on the field. It is a delay of game against Texas State. And will spot the football five, five yards further back. Been a relatively clean game for G.J. Kenny's team, by the way. Only three penalties so far. 
Talked about self-inflicted wounds earlier. The Bobcats really since the early stages of the game have played pretty clean. And O'Kelly gets it away. A boomer of a punt. And Hood, the fair catch at the 23-yard line. Got a big game coming up in the Sunbelt Conference. It, a, it is a West Division showdown under the lights on Thursday. In Lafayette, it is the Ragin Cajuns host the Southern Miss Golden Eagles kickoff from Cajun Field at 6.30 on ESPNU. How about Will Hall, Southern Miss team getting a win today over got a ULM? Big one. That's a big win. And you know that Lu University of Louisiana is going to be ready for that one after what took place this week, and they're dropping one on the road in Jonesboro. That was the first Sunbelt win of the year for Southern Miss. And, yes, the Raging Cajuns, who played so well against South Alabama last week, losing today in Jonesboro. Here's White going down the sidelines. He's had a good night. Jalen White, how about his numbers? He's approaching 150 now. 15 carries for White and right around, yeah, 150 for the game. He's got that explosive. Good block right at the point of the attack. They've overloaded with three receivers to the top. And been able to run the ball here in the second half. Officially, 15 carries, 158 yards for White. 16th carry of the game, looking for a hole, and White not going to find one. Got tracked down by Josh Eaton and Dan Foster, Jr. Uh, the two defensive tackles did a great job that time. No place for him to go. He's trying to sidestep around, but all those big bodies in there tries to bounce it to the outside. Brought down for a loss. I referenced Georgia Southern's option-based offense, which they had forever. On that note, Keith, two of the service academies playing today, Army and Air Force, and a stunner in Colorado Springs as Bryn spins that incomplete. There's a flag. And yeah, there's contact. I thought it was incidental, but it's going to bring pass interference. Going to get Josh Eden against Queeley. That'll move the sticks. Trying to step inside it. They were... There was contact, no question about it. it seemed to me it was their legs got tangled up, not their arms, but it's going to go as a P.I. Pass interference, defense, foul, and the automatic first down. So a first down via penalty. Yeah, about that Army going mm -hmm. to Colorado Springs and upsetting Air Force, who had just gotten themselves into the top 25. An Army team that hadn't looked all that great this year. It's not. And you said it, Air Force is one of the top non-P5 teams in the country. Now, part of that conversation could be the Sunbelt Zone, James Madison. Could be an offsides call here against Eden. Back-to-back -back penalties against a transfer from Oklahoma. Yeah, the, he was so far in the neutral zone that Encroachment is, you know, it'll be all sides, but they stop it because you don't want him a free all shot at the quarterback. Defense, number one. Five yard penalty remains first down. You know, most of the time quarterbacks, Brant, want that. If he mm -hmm. sees offside, he's going to go deep. He wants that play, but sometimes the officials say he's so far off, we, we want to avoid injury. We're mm -hmm. going to stop the play. You and I have chronicled JMU a bit. Again, oh, the yeah. Dukes not eligible for the postseason. So if this game holds, if the Eagles can't come back and win, all of a sudden that East Division race to win the division and rep the Sun Belt, or rep the East rather than the Sun Belt title game, becomes wide open. Play fake. Little screen for McAfee, the tight end. Had a touchdown catch on the Eagles last drive. Tracked down by Tavian Coleman. Going to bring up second down and short. That's a nice job staying home by Coleman to come back. That play looked like it was set up and the screen was set up. You think, oh, it's got a chance, but Coleman just kept moving. Big defensive tackle out there, making the tackle on the sidelines. Looking up, say, hey, I can just go sideline to sideline. But Steven Coleman, by the way, 6'1", 280, believe it or not, he was an all-district tennis player in high school. This is the backup quarterback, J.C. French. Here for the Eagles, able to take that for a first down. So both quarterbacks with a formation there. And now French back to the sidelines. Yeah, they were trying to, it looked like to me they were trying to set up something. And then they, he saw right here that there was nothing there on the pass. And he said, I'm going to get what I can get. And he gets enough to get a first down. 
French, the first year transfer from Memphis. And Brynn back to take the snap here for Georgia Southern. Had his big game against the Panthers last week. Kind of a tough night tonight. Ten minutes to go in the fourth. Down 28. Brynn slings complete inside the 20. Able to hit Darren Burgess, who's had a really quiet night. So quiet, in fact, that is first catch of the game. Uh, they've done a great job. I mean, these four wide receivers all have got really good ability. That is his first catch. And did a nice job blocking up the blitz coming from the Bobcats that time. Gave him enough time to deliver the football. Burgess fourth in the conference and catches coming in. Got his first one on the docket there. And now Queerly the man in motion. Here's Bryn going to the air, screen for Hood, and Bobcats with the open field tackle, but a first down for the Eagles. The drive continues. Seventh play of the drive coming up. Uh, it looked like it was set up right there. It did get enough to get the first down, but all this looks like, oh, this is going to do, and it's just a nice job of coming up and making the play, forcing him to earn it. You're taking time off this clock, just about nine minutes to go. Eagles inside the red zone for the 15. Third red zone trip of the day for Georgia Southern. Here's Davis lofting that in the end zone, looking for a back shoulder, and there's the flag. Burgess drew the pit league against Chris Mills. Well, there was a lot of hand fighting there with both sides, both trying to get loose. Flag comes in, and there's definitely contact. Mm -hmm. Both of them have just didn't get a chance to look back for the football because of that. First to go for the Eagles. Again, the quarterback, Davis Brand, first year at Georgia Southern. His predecessor, Kyle Van Trees, still a part of the program. He is the radio sideline reporter. And the two of them, really good friends, Brand and Van Trees. And Clay Hill and Telegos, without the play of Van Trees, they don't recruit, get to recruit a player like Bryn. Bobcats late getting a defender off. Now they do. First and goal for the two yard line. Here's Bryn with the handoff, but false start. This play never happened. Well, you get a first. Offense, number. First down. You know, it puts gray hairs on a coach. I mean, you're first and goal at the two. You, you got a great opportunity here to get it in, and then you get an illegal procedure. It changes mm -hmm. your play call. You, you, you know, now you're back out to seven-yard line. Still have your jumbo package in the game, though. You got the big boys in there. Two tight ends. Don't see a lot of this in today's game. Brent under center. Play fake to White. Brent under duress. And that pass in the end zone almost picks. But there is a flag. This could be rough in the passer sure against could. Texas State. Contact to the head. See right here at the end as he rolls out. Just Ball. see if, yeah, see Ball. that, that hand, right hand comes down on the face mask. At the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Yeah, they catch Brian Holloway. Can't go high in the quarterback. You now you go up and you know he didn't. It wasn't a. It was hit with his hand as he was coming down, but it did caught part of his mask. So it hit to the to the head's going to draw that penalty. It's going to now be first and goal again. This time just outside the three. But a good try for the Eagles, but it's also been time consuming. It's eaten up about four minutes. They need points down 28. Need him in a hurry. Here's a run off the left side, and that is White. Second time today, he's found Pater. Well, power running, good drive to get down the field. You look at it, might be a little bit too late, but well, they have finally found some of their offense here in the late third quarter and into the fourth quarter here. Good seven play, 76 yard drive. Jalen White, well, his numbers are getting really good. Has towed to the rock 17 times, a buck 59, and a couple of trips into the end zone. So the Eagles have rattled off 14 straight of their own, trying to stay in the game, but trailing 45-24.
Fourth quarter. Here in San Marcos with 8.40 left. Bobcats on top. This coming Saturday, the Bobcats are on the road for the first time in a month as they travel to Conway to face Grayson McCall in the Coastal Carolina. Shot to clears. Next Saturday, south side of Myrtle Beach, as you look at the beautiful scenery here in San Marcos. Sun is setting. Old Main, one of the yeah. landmark buildings on campus off in the distance. Eagles coming off the touchdown drive as we look ahead to Saturday's game. 2.30 kickoff at ESPN+. Plus. Bobcats facing Grace McCall in Coastal Carolina. Going to be a big game for both teams in another East versus West matchup like we're seeing tonight. Bobcats expecting the onside here. The deep man, Drew Donnelly, the ball shouldn't get near him. Here's the onside kick. Instead, though, they do go deep, and Donnelly going to let it go into the end zone for a touchback. So the Bobcats nursing a 21-point lead. They've got the ball when we come back, leading 45-24 over Georgia Southern. A look at T.J. Finley, what a difference a week makes, huh? His yardage is up, his touchdowns is up, or are up, and his interceptions, none this week after throwing two against Troy. Yeah, and it, it, the other part of that is we did not see him use his feet last week whatsoever. I'm still going to throw that in. Those numbers are good, but still, he, he's used his feet tonight. Mm -hmm. Put it in the end zone, also got a couple of first downs where he's put it down under pressure. So he's done a nice job. You can just feel he's been more comfortable in the pocket mm -hmm. this week. Eagles lined up what we thought would be an onside kick. It didn't come. Do have all three timeouts left. Need the ball back in a hurry. First play in this drive. Monty, there's a face mask coming and an easy spot there for the official. They're going to get Marquez Watson Trent for grabbing the face mask of Monty. Uh, he just reaches out with that big paw and gets it, and there's no question about this. See it right there. I mean, he just rips him all the way around. I don't know that he let go of it ever. Marquez Watson Trent, leader again of this defense from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Huge pick six in the win over Georgia State last week, but kind of a quiet night so far. Been a tough day for this Eagle defense. The Bobcats have put up 45. They have punted only once. There's one turnover. Beyond that, all touchdowns and field goals. Yeah, and Brent, one of the things, two things jump in. They have 465 yards, so they've got a couple of, mm -hmm. but only 68 plays. We've seen this team run 100 plays multiple times. Mm -hmm. Tells you that the big plays that it's have been explosives. lacking no the doubt. past couple of weeks have been there. G.J. Kenny, but looking back at the film of the Troy game, thought they lot of left and meat on the bone in terms of the big plays against Troy. But tonight they're averaging about seven yards a play. Here's Motti, and Motti squeezing through the right side. Eagles ripping for the football, brought down by Robertson on the play. And Motti picks up about five yards with eight minutes to go. Well, it's just a nice job. Good push up front, and then he bounces it to the outside. Boy, they're really going to strip that football. One thing, he, it's nice to see him hold on to it. Monty's had a bad wrist on that left wrist, but he had that ball in his right hand that time. You saw the number there, just how explosive Monty can be. Only Marshawn Lloyd of USC averaging more yards to play. This Ishmael Monty, his average of 170 all-purpose yards per game leads the country. Has 94 yards rushing tonight. Now he's over 100 yards. There goes Motti. Bangs into the secondary. Boy, he has a burst about him with the way that he runs with the football. I think this is going to come back for a hold, for a hold but, but that's fun to watch. Watch this burst. You see it right there. Now, all of a sudden, second gear. Gets it out in the second gear, and he goes. It doesn't take him long to get there. This is going to come back from a hold, by a hold, though. And Motti took a hit, too, from T.J. Smith. Offense, number 52. He played second down. Flag called against Trenton Scott. But I, I, watching Motti, 
his patience. He, he allows his offensive line to get their blocks, get on their blocks, and then, like you talked about, his acceleration is so impressive. Just got a look at DJ Kenny. The Bobcats hold on, will move his career record as the head coach to 18 and 5. There's a dart throw to Homer, 13th catch of the day, and that ties a program record. Well, he's just, he, he's, he runs such great, that's why he's, <laughs> he goes right back to I'll get to it after this play. Bobcats quick to the ball. Here's Motti breaking a couple of tackles, and that'll move the sticks inside of midfield. He gets open not with his great burst of speed, but it's an outstanding route. And he, he is, he's run that inside seam at least seven times tonight. And his pitch and catch, every one of them has been successful. Yeah, it feels like everything over the middle has been there for this passing offense. And Finley's picked the Eagles apart. He's now over 300 yards passing. Motti with that carry, now officially over 100 for the day. Hobart over 100 yards. Kind of reminds me of the day a bit of the old Dallas Cowboys, a big three, right? Aikman, yep. Smith, Irvin. You but get three guys going in the offense, things are good. Motti trying to find some space here, and that's going to take him back under 100. Good tackle for loss from, Ty from Tyrell Davis as we wind him inside of six minutes to go. Uh, first timeout, I believe a timeout called by George, the Eagles, Georgia Southern, trying to preserve some time on this clock. So, timeout, Clay Hilton and the Eagles with 5.50 left, and the Bobcats perhaps on their way to milestone win, number six. Back out at Bobcat Stadium, Texas State. Cruising 45 24 the lead under six minutes to go coming out of the Eagles call timeout Something that Keith was pointing out during the break the Bobcats in this game have 30 first downs. 30. That's that's a phenomenal number Over 200 for the year Bobcats 12th in the country in first downs coming into the night That ranking could go up by night's end Second out of 12 Finley Looking for a backside screen, didn't really develop there, going from Motti. I'll stop the clock with 5.51 to go. Uh, it, it's a smart play. It, don't chance it. If he tries to force that football, he could get pick six and go the other way. And he just threw it into the ground outside of the tackle box. It didn't have to get to the back to the line of scrimmage because the, the running back is in the vicinity. It was right at his feet. So now it's going to bring up a big third down here. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Bobcats keep it on the ground, try to keep that clock moving, or force Clay Helton to use a timeout. They're going to be backed up five more. I think Cole Wilson jumped early. And the Bobcat receiver was the one who jumped. Now Turn I think you can see draw for sure now. Oh, yeah. And they were going to look at Clay Helton, son of a coach as well. Kim Helton, his dad, longtime coach in the college and NFL ranks. And in fact, Clay played for his dad, Kim, at the University of Houston in the mid-90s. And here's a quarterback draw for Finley. And Finley trying to protect the football first and foremost. Gets brought down right around midfield. Tackle made by Alludge Fall. And That'll lead to a timeout from Clay Helton. And so the Eagles spin their second timeout of the half. They got one left inside of 5.45 to go, 45-24. Bobcats on top will step aside. Texas State trying to close things out. Eagles looking for a miracle comeback under six minutes to go. Keith, now we'll look at tonight's connection of the game, and here's your boy again, Joey Holbert, on the receiving end of this dot from T.J. Finley. Well, it's just an outstanding back shoulder throw, and what a catch to go up, contested catch, and boy, he has been a connection all night. Great night. 
And that play kind of a microcosm of the night between those two. Holbert, 13 catches, and Finley over 300 yards passing. Here's Hood trying to make a play and going to be lucky to reach the 10-yard line. Well, this is a great job of keeping contained on the outside. As you're one of the gunners, you've got to keep containment. Just wouldn't a lot allow him around the corner. Comes up with a big stop of a guy that can really fly if he gets the corner. Mm -hmm. Now 5.32 to go, down three scores. Got to go quick one timeout. Saw Clay Helton use two of the timeouts on the last possession for Texas State. Try to preserve time, leave as much time to the clock as possible, but a lot of work to do if you're the Eagles here. Ball back up to the 10 yard line, down 21. Yeah, going to play two deep safeties here. You're going to keep things in front of you, rush four. You know, it's one of those things where you're going to surrender some yardage, but try not to surrender points. On first down, here's a run for the Eagles, so no white out on the field. Instead, it is Terrence Gibbs, first carry of the night. Good for about nine yards as he spells white on that first play. Well, you'll surrender nine yards. Didn't stop the clock. Clock keeps it, continues to run. Maybe the night done for white. 17 carries over 150 yards and a couple of touchdowns for the Eagles. Again, one of their bright spots today. Here's a pass lofted to the near side. Good catch from Sanders. That'll move the chains with five minutes to go. It had to put that air under because it was a defender in between. Yeah. It did a nice job of dropping that out over the top. It moves the chains and a first down. Clock again, continues to move. No chain stoppage until we get inside two minutes. You know, again, maybe Brent has not had his best night in terms of numbers, but you see the flashes and the reason why G.J. Kenny told us that his skill set is as good as we've seen from anybody all year. Touch on that throw. First down at 10. Here's another run for Gibbs. And goes across the 35-yard line for maybe three as we approach four minutes to go. Yeah, nice job at the middle linebacker, Brian Holloway. You just you can see him right here. He's following the play all the way across. This keeps bouncing to the outside right there. And you'll give up three yards at this point of the ball game. Every time that they change, you're going to change just to slow and the clock down. The Eagles will be on the road again next week facing Marshall and trying to Give some payback to the Thundering Herd as we see a rope there from Brynn to Caleb Hood. What a pass over the middle, hitting Hood in stride for first down of the 25-yard line. Boy, he did find that seam, and he shows you that explosiveness right here. This is a perfectly thrown football. Catches him in stride down at the 25-yard line. That didn't take long. Right over the head of Sean Holden, one of the better passes from Davis Brynn tonight. And Hood with the catch, seventh of the game. On first down, Brynn steps up on the run. Brynn's got plenty of room. Brynn inside the 10, and then goes out of bounds. Now he's, he saw that gap open, and all the receivers were on deep post across the middle. Defenders had their back turned. He puts it down right here, and he sees that split. Not even thinking about throwing it. He's going to run it as far as he can and get out of bounds. Last two plays have picked up 56 yards for the Eagles. They've gone from their own 10 yard line to the Bobcats seven. And now a Texas State player is down. This is Tavian Coleman down for Texas State. So I mentioned again the Eagles at Marshall next week. Talked about payback. The Thundering Herd beat the Eagles last year in Statesboro. And the Eagles are going to road heavy slate to end the year. At Marshall next week, a home game against Old Dominion. And then on the road to face an all too familiar rival to Appalachian State, a rivalry. That goes back their days together in the SOCON, the Southern Conference. Yeah, you, you just look at that, and, and if they're in position. that are going to have to win three out of their last four were on the road, and at this point, it looks like they're going to drop this one. Now, 
anything can happen. There's still 250 to go in the ball game, and they got an opportunity to find a way to get in the end zone. But you know, you go to Marshall, Huntington it, it is a hard place to win. Mm -hmm. All three of those games against Eastern Division teams, and again, the race for the Sun Belt title game to rep the East is going to be tight. JMU is not eligible. So you have a number of teams fighting for that East Division championship spot. It kind of feels like Troy's got a pretty good leg up for the West. Still three weeks to go in the season, anything could happen. Yeah, that was a big win for them, South Alabama, yeah. uh, uh, on Thursday night to put them in really good spot. They're going to have at least a one-game lead on everybody mm -hmm. in the West. And the tiebreakers against Texas State and South Alabama already yep. as well. They also beat Arkansas State, who, have, as we talked about, they're starting to pick things up. They've won two in a row. Out of the injury stoppage, under three minutes to go. First to go for the seven. Bren looking. Bren swings it out, and Queeley going to be dropped at about the seven. Didn't really pick up much of anything, and the clock's going to continue to tick inside of two and a half. Yeah, it didn't take the play fake. They were trying to go play action. See the pump fake right there, trying to get a defender to come up. Had to come check back down. And everybody swarms to the football. The clock continues to run. Second down and goal. Bryn steps up on the run, slides, and a slide began at the five. And that's where they mark the football. Got to get down when you need to get down. Bryn knew he was. He was in trouble. He had to buy enough time to call a timeout here. Got to save those precious seconds on the clock, even though it's just going to be third down. But they just want to save that time with 150 to go in the ball game. So the timeout taken with 110 seconds left. You know, for the Bobcats again, they're on the road next week at Coastal Carolina, and again the week after against Arkansas State. Finishing the year at home against South Alabama. If Troy slips up and a window cracks for the Bobcats, that is their path, perhaps, to represent the West. Going to be tough, though, with that type of schedule and the way Troy's playing. Yeah, the way Troy's playing, it, it, they put themselves in great position. Also got extra days to rest after playing on Thursday night, even though they had a quick turnaround after playing the Bobcats here. And the other thing, going on the road, Coastal, on the road at Coastal is, is one of those things you look at, and then you got to go to Jonesboro. I also feel like Troy's biggest tests have already come and gone. Their schedule not quite as daunting as some of the others. They definitely have the fast track to rep the West for a second straight year. All right, out of the timeout. Each team, one left. Obviously, four down territory. And the ball is fumbled on the exchange. And the Eagles have turned it over for a second time tonight, and that will serve as a final nail in the coffin. Still a mad scrabble for the football here. See, I haven't seen an official come up yet. Our oh, head, our head, head official. official. The referee yeah. comes up, said it is Texas State football. There's a fumble recovered by the defense. The ball belongs to Texas State. First and ten. Georgia Southern has done such a great job this year forcing turnovers, but conversely, they've coughed it up quite a bit as well. Only six teams in the nation have given the ball away more than the Eagles. That is their 21st turnover of the year. Yeah, it's hard to win football games and be as successful as they have been. I mean, they come in at six and two with that many div now. They also get turnovers. They've yes. been, been good at that part of it, too. But uh, it's, that that should seal the deal right there. So, Keith, if you're the Bobcat, still work to be done, certainly as, a, as far as the year is concerned. However, they just checked off one of their major to-do list items, get six wins, become eligible, and the circumstances for bowl games far different than it was the last time they were eligible. Not as many Sunbelt tie-ins.
enjoy the video with you. So they're going to go back and take a look at the fumble recovery here to see if it, it is, in fact, Texas State football. But getting back to the conversation, back in 2014, the Sun Belt only had four bowl tie-ins. Far more now, and with so many more bowls beyond the Sun Belt tie-ins, it feels like if you get to six, you're going to go. Can't make any promises, certainly, until it's said and done. But the program has to feel very good about the chances of finally going to the postseason. I, I agree. It, it, first of all, you, you're, you're guaranteed, no matter what happens, a 500 record on the season. First That's, time in nine years. First time that you see that. So you're, so the second part of that is it gives you the month of November to get that seventh win. And I think it's seven, you're, you're almost guaranteed. There's no doubt. That, that you're going to go be able to get those extra, extra practices, which are so important, especially to, to teams that, that are growing and programs in the first year. It's a brand new program under the direction of that man right there you see on the screen. You know, it, it is Texas State football. So those extra workouts are, are important, extra camaraderie. There's everything that goes with it. And then the, the last part of it, the support for a program that you're trying to build mm -hmm. really changes when all of a sudden, hey, we're going to see them somewhere in a bowl game somewhere down the line. That, that is a major factor. You know, one of the concerns when the Bobcats won seven games back in 2014, nine years ago, was will there be fan turnout? And you look at the, the way Bobcat fans have attended games this year, specifically at home, been tremendous turnouts. Tonight, 18,000. Each of the first four home games, over 20,000. They showed up at Baylor. They went to UTC to San Antonio. Yeah. They'll show that they could travel a bit. So I would think the appeal of the program is far more enticing for the bowl committees than it was back in 2014. Yeah, we're fixing to get a shower down here if we can get it. Uh, uh, on the head coach, they've got a, the bucket uh, hidden as he take this and... Yep, there it is, a Gatorade bath. And if you're DJ Kenny, that's got to feel good. Now it's a side coming. I didn't want to <clears throat> surprise anybody, but I wanted. That's it's a big moment. Now, does that mean that the it is that you accomplished everything you wanted to accomplish? Absolutely not. But it is a big moment for a first year coach and a new program. Well, look at the expression there. Brian Holloway visiting with his head coach. Holloway, one of the few holdovers from a year ago, part of a team that only won four games last year, has won more than four in nine years. They've got six this season, and for the first time in close to a decade, Texas State is bowl eligible. It's just huge. It, it, it really professed uh, impressive performance. They're bowl eligible. They came out. It, Offensively tonight, it was in a, they came out early in the game and created what they wanted offensively, and they did it the entire night. And T.J. Finley is bowling. How about that moment there? Some of the fans have spilled out onto the field. One of the best moments in this stadium in a very, very long time. There's a mob around G.J. Kenny momentarily. Core will try to sift through the crowd and visit with him to talk about what is a milestone win with this program. And this team, this fan base is feeling it. The Bobcats feel like they're bowl bound here in 2023. I guarantee we will hear one other thing about this, that our season is not over, that the, all this. Yeah, I know what coaches will say, but it was still, uh, it's a big moment for these young men down on the field. G.J. Kenny being embraced by his athletic director, Don Coriel. The expression on his face says it all. What a turnaround with this program. Over the past nine years, seasons of three wins, two wins, four wins, tough losses, blowout losses. 
The ball not bouncing their way. It has bounced their way this year. Through nine games, a record of six and three. And how about the two quarterbacks? TJ Finley, Malik Hornsby meeting. And now GJ Kenny visiting with the family. Wife Summer and his children. What a moment here in San Marcos. And again, you want to enjoy this moment, no question about it. But I would guarantee you that these guys, as soon as they get in the locker room, one of the first things is enjoy this moment, but we still got work to do. It's still November, there's still three football games left. All right, Coral, you're visiting with GJ Kenny down in the field, take it away. Coach, the first time this program is bowl eligible for the, in a decade. How did the relationships in this room with this brand new team get it done tonight? Yeah, just just really proud of the staff and these players, the administration for giving me an opportunity. And, and uh, this is a special team, and for us to go out and, and get it at home, that, that's a big one. That's a big one. So just really proud of these guys. Now, the way in which they did it today, a big game in every phase of it. I have to ask you about your defense. They were on a mission. How do you evaluate their performance? Yeah, really proud of those guys. It was a team effort, offense, defense, special teams. We got the job done. That's all that matters. Lastly, Coach, over 30 first downs for your team today. How are they able just to move the chains and sustain these drives and stay in a rhythm all night? Yeah, we, we got a really good offense, and, and uh, you know, we really should have scored more. It's just part of it, but we did what we had to do to win the game. Now, Coach, I know this is just one thing on the checklist this year. You're not done. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys. All right. Thank you, Coral. So if you're a Bobcat fan now, Keith, got to think about maybe going to New Orleans, maybe going to Orlando, to the Cura Bowl, maybe sure. go to Alabama, to Montgomery or Mobile, one of the several Sunbelt Bowl tie-ins. What a special moment for G.J. Kenny and his program. Yeah, he, 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 he won't get it right there, but he's very excited. There, there's no question about it. And this team and this universe is excited about it. But you want to enjoy tonight and then go back to work tomorrow. Yep, G.J. Kenny has what he calls a 24-hour rule. They'll enjoy it tonight. Then it's on to Coastal Carolina next week. But we know this, it has been a special season tonight, a special game for this program. So for Keith Moreland, I'm Brain Freeman saying so long. From Bobcat Stadium, the final score, Texas State 45, Georgia Southern 24. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. From San Marcos, good night.